Hello, YouTube. Just waiting for the hacks one or two coming in. I'm going to mute my mic. You'll have to excuse the background noise. Hello, John, how are you? How are you? Fine, thanks. It's raining here. It's been raining all day. Oh, it, it's been raining the past couple of days where I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just halfway through making a cup of tea. Mm. But I just want to do this stuff on uh, not just grind down yet. Because I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to spend all day having a go at him. When he first started on YouTube, he was okay, John. You know. Oh yeah, he he, he was. He had a lot more grace. He was, you know, preached a lot of the sound doctrine. Now today, yeah. I mean, you you compare him today to how he was like ten years ago, it's completely different. Well, I don't go that far back. Um. I, I do remember coming across his channel 2012, maybe, because I, I checked out Eric John Phelps, because I knew about his book before I got out of jail. You know, Eric John Phelps' book, um, Vatican Assassins, and uh, I think it was, I think Brian did an interview with Eric John Phelps. He did. I, I watched the interview. They brought up a lot of good stuff. I mean, yeah. uh, I have yeah. I have Eric Phelps's book, Vatican Assassins. Like, I got a oh, um, yeah. PDF copy. Yeah. yeah, it it was pretty big. It's it was like a hundred megabytes or something for just for a PDF copy. But um, yeah. they uh they like Eric Phelps. He knows he knows a lot about the Jesuits. Knows about their power structure. I mean, he really is kind of the go to guy to expose yeah. the Jesuits. I mean, I I've yeah. done some of my own stuff exposing the Jesuits. But really, he's kind of the, the main guy I point to as, you know, here's the expert on exposing the Jesuits. And I've heard people accuse, falsely accuse him of being Jesuit. I mean, that's just... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know, you know, Brian Moonan, just this uh, this this other novice, novice too, just like, you know, these other guys. Um, he called Eric Phelps a Jesuit because Eric Phelps talks about, you know, like kindred purity and, and that kind of stuff. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, oh, it, it's, it's kind of... Go ahead. And pro baptical, a new state he wants to create or something. I don't know. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, you know, I mean, it's like calling him a Jesuit when he basically has dedicated his whole life to exposing the Jesuits. You know, and, and he's produced lots of stuff. I mean, you know, uh, calling him a Jesuit is really just really weird. I mean, you know, it, it, it's like you know, but again, you know, they they want to discredit somebody, so they call them a Jesuit. You know. Because yeah. calling Eric Phelps a Jesuit, you know, no, no one was. Just, and and I know they saw this this little clip. There's like this little clip they take out of context, where Eric Phelps says "we the Jesuits" and points to himself, but you know, totally ripped out of context. Yeah. And that's not what he's saying. No, of course not. Yeah. And if he was, he would never admit it, John. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, he, yeah, he would never admit. He never would call himself a Jesuit if he was one. You know. No, he wouldn't. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Exactly. I mean, anybody with any common sense, John, I know you've been referred to as that. 
knows perfectly well you're not Jesuit. Uh -huh. People may seem as though may behave like it. And to be fair, I think you'd probably agree that Aaron Deering just isn't. He might. He, he may well be behaving like a Jesuit, but yeah. he's just not smart enough, John. You know what I mean? I know why you recalled him that. Yeah, because he is behaving. He's behaving a lot like a Jesuit. He lies. He just like totally twists people's words and everything. Yeah, and it's no good preaching. I mean, there's no wrong with preaching holiness. Absolutely not from the King James Bible. Yeah, but at least let's have uh, less lies about other people. Yeah, uh, I'm not having a go at Tim. I know Tim said basically the same things that King's Table has. And I don't agree with King's Table and everything. Neither but do he, I. But he wouldn't admit that King's Table was right on on certain things. He wouldn't mention King's Table and say, oh, King's Table was right, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the thing is, is that even when I would listen to Aaron Deering, I just had a problem with him just calling everyone lost. I mean, and, you know, I was talking with Jeremy Carter over email and, you know, we kind of agreed how it's really weird how all these young kids, like Aaron Deering, he got saved when he was 19 years old in 2016. In 2016, I was 14. So he's five, about five years older than I am. So he would basically only be 23 or 24 years old. I mean, someone who's been saved, you know, supposedly, I don't believe he's saved, but supposedly been saved for four years and is only in his early 20s, way too young, both spiritually and physically, to be into and get into ministry. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and as a result, you know, these young kids are all just coming out. I mean, I make Christian videos, but I don't say I'm in ministry. I don't, I don't treat it like a ministry. I mean, making Christian videos is not necessarily running a ministry, but Aaron Deering says he's in ministry. So, but you have these young kids who come out and say they're in ministry and as a result they get out they teach all kinds of heresy they think they can just call everyone lost and just you know condemn everyone as a jesuit and everything yeah. and when you tr and when you try to correct them they just get all mad because you know their, their pride gets hurt and i've seen that with aaron you know he's got some very big serious pride issues i mean i've tried I've, i was actually afraid to afraid to correct him because i was i was just i don't like being called lost or that kind of stuff or a devil because when someone tries to correct them that's what he does he just you know, just just attacks them and, and, and lies yeah. about them. The thing with calling somebody a Jesuit, I'm not having a poke at anybody. You do what you want, you say what you want on your own channel and all that stuff. But it gives you an excuse later on to ignore that person, and it paints you into a into a corner. Because how do you say, "Oh, I got it wrong," and this? That, I mean, it's okay repenting and asking people to forgive you. That's okay, you know. Obviously, that's the right thing. Mm -hmm. But once you've accused somebody of being a Jesuit, it, it, it's like giving yourself an excuse to just totally discount somebody. In yeah. what way of saying somebody's unsaved? Essentially, yeah, calling them a Jesuit, you know, because obviously Roman Catholics are, are not saved. So calling them a Jesuit is basically saying they're lost. And, you know, yeah. never mind, never mind, like Aaron Deering, he just never mind their testimony, never mind the fruit they produce, never mind, you know, the, the work they've done. If if they just say one little thing wrong, oh, they're a Jesuit, they're lost. They're, they're he called me, he said, um, he said, I have a, a spirit of divination or something. You know, he just turns on them, on them that quickly. So yeah, the other thing is with Catholics, you could argue that Catholics are sort of extension of the Jesuits because every Catholic so-called priest yeah. They're trained by the Jesuits and they pass on their so called knowledge, their demonic doctrines, doctrines of devils to their followers, as it were. So oh, wow. they're just passing on what they've learned or what yeah. they think they've learned from Catholic so called priests who have been. So I mean, you can argue yeah. with that. Well, it's funny if you argue with Catholics and you bring up scripture, every verse they try to use against you is just the same thing over and over again. They'll, they'll use John 6, they'll use Matthew, you know, 18, 16 or whatever. I, I don't remember the exact verse they use, but they always just parrot the same verses. And then when you try to show them, you know, like I was talking with the Catholic on Instagram and, you know, she quoted, I think it was a John 6, 54, where it talks about, you know, eating the flesh of Jesus Christ. And I showed her, you know, in, if you read it in context, it's not saying you have to eat the physical flesh. It's saying that in context, Christ is our bread of life, and we receive that bread by believing on him. That's the context. Yeah. So it's not saying we have to physically eat his flesh and drink his blood. I explained that to her, and she just said, well, you know, 
Uh, and, and she had no response because she was just repeating what her priest told her. She wasn't looking it up herself. No. And the other thing is, I've noticed in, I don't know if you call it conversation with Catholics, uh, sorry about that, via, via your keyboard, but you end up in a debate where you just really feel as though you're just going round and round in circles with them. They turn everything into a circular argument. like Exactly, yeah. I mean, I, well, exactly. I mean, I've argued with Catholics on Instagram, and, you know, I I, I like ref, I refute every point they give. I just I give an answer to every point they give, and they just keep coming up with more and more questions. And I, I refute each question with scripture. I, I give them, like, I quote scripture after scripture after scripture to them, and they just will not budge. I mean, they're, it just ingrained in them, especially with the, the pre-Vatican II Catholics. Um, oh. I, I mean, I, I, I would quote them just so many verses that clearly, just very, very clearly contradict what their church says. And they just, they can't accept it because, you know, because I'm a heretic according to them and I'm going against the Holy Church. And if you know yeah. about Catholicism, they hold the church above the scripture. So if I'm going against the church, I'm, I'm going yeah. against, I'm, I'm basically going against Jesus Christ. So basically if I quote scripture to them, it's basically just, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, not interpreting it correctly, even though I'm just saying what the verse says. Yeah. Uh, to get back to Brian, though, when I first started watching him, I don't mean to change the subject. We can come back to that. Uh, I mean, he's done some excellent videos. All his videos, I've listened to every one of them. I've got a complete list of all the verses that he gives as pre-trib proofs. Oh, same here. I I, have, I yeah. actually have a book. I actually have a, I write down all the scriptures. I even, like, write down the notes, too. Because um, he's got a lot of good stuff, you know, on the pre-trib. And, and some of my videos... I, you know, I'll, I'll learn some stuff from him and, and, you know, share some of that, that knowledge in my videos. And, you know, that, that gets me accused of emulating Brian. I'm like, I'm just sharing what I've learned. I'm not trying to emulate anyone. So, no, but, well, well, you are in a sense, John. I mean, you're trying yeah. to emulate Paul, you're trying to emulate Jesus Christ. But if you're teaching sound doctrine, you're always going to sound like Christians of old, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like Tyndale and, and other. Yeah other old preachers because they're all teach mostly i would have said teaching sound doctrine from the king james bible exactly yeah you and, and so, some of the videos i've done on post-trib i've actually done some stuff that brian hasn't covered like i've done stuff on how the post-trib brings the spirit of fear about how acts chapter 9 destroys it i've done stuff on the post-trib rapture that brian hasn't covered so yeah, yeah. you know that's the thing we're all stood on somebody's shoulders that parable yeah. jesus jesus gave yeah, exactly, yeah. Being the the uh, the headstone of the chief corner, mm -hmm. a building uh, fitly fitly framed together, but the stones are put piled on. You know, the apostles and all the Christians afterward. It's a, like a we stood on somebody's shoulder, John. Exactly, God, yeah. You know, we stood on the glassy sea. Yeah, and you know, a, a young person like me, you know, I should be studying the scriptures, but I also should be, you know, listening to elders too, because they obviously know the scriptures better. So I should also, you know, because the Bible, like the Bible does say in Second uh, Timothy two two, you know, it is like it does talk about how it's right to, it's okay to learn off other brethren, it's okay to learn off elders. So absolutely no problem with it, John. Yeah, and I don't think an elder. I don't know how. I'd have to go into the, my Bible. An elder is just somebody who's a bit longer in the tooth, I would have said. Yeah. I'm not trying to go out of scripture. They, they've come across all the pitfalls and the usual arguments that they might get. And there's always something that you can learn from all the people. But there's no, no problem with rebuking an elder either. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, they'll take the... They'll take the verse where it says rebuke not an elder, but if you read it in context, it does describe, you know, what can happen if you're going to rebuke an elder. You have to have witnesses. So, you know, yeah. they, they yeah. take that and say, see, you can't rebuke an elder at all, which is not true. I mean, they're taking it out of context. If you read it in context, it gives, you know, it says you have to have two witnesses because, you know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So if you have two witnesses, then you can go to an elder because they're, they're not above the scriptures. They're not like, they, they're not like immune to being rebuked. You can go to them and say, Hey, you're wrong. You know? Yeah. And, and if it, and, and that was kind of the problem I was seeing with Brian is he, he was kind of getting this thing of, well, I'm an elder. So therefore a younger person can't, you know, try to correct me. And he would just kind of get very prideful about it. And, 
you know, them them being an elder or them being older does not mean this doesn't mean anything when it comes to them being wrong with the scriptures. If if someone who's younger understands the scriptures just as good as they do, and they can see they're wrong, they can come to them and say, "Hey, you're wrong," and, and you know, it's not not nothing wrong with that. No, but I mean, I can understand partly because he wouldn't want to be corrected and correct himself, perhaps on a live stream. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Personally, I, I just think Brian, he's got some pride issues because, you know, it, it's like not just me. I mean, because like when Tim tried to correct Brian, uh, the comment, I think it's been deleted, but Tim tried to, you know, said you know, on his video game sermon, you know, um, tried to correct him. And then Brian, all Brian's followers, his cult followers uh, were just calling Tim lost. And then some of them were sending Brian's salvation message. And, and Brian was even harding. I, I heard he hearted one of the comments. Um, this is, you know, I find that Brian, he's kind of very arrogant and just and just prideful, and he won't take correction from anybody that he that he's younger than him. He just thinks that well, I'm older than you, so therefore you can't correct me, you know, regardless yeah. if I'm wrong. I, I wouldn't personally have a problem uh, sending if somebody wanted some excellent. I mean, I know I could send them to you, teaching material on what Catholicism is really all about. I don't think it's yeah. a real problem sending him to one of his videos. You know, well, but it, it's you, funny. You, go ahead. When, sorry, uh, hold that thought. When do you think he started sort of not going wrong off the rails a bit? Um, for want of a better extra expression, well, I've seen a lot of his videos. I think he kind of started going off the rails, um, uh, around I'd say 2014 2015. That was kind of when you know the grace he had was kind of going away and he was kind of getting more legalistic and, and adding more to salvation because i listened to his early sermons he was just simply saying you know repentance you know you you know you're a sinner and jesus saves you and faith he, but now today like like around starting in 2014 he was saying well you have to believe this or you know if you do this you're not saved or if you, if you do that or you believe this you're not really saved you know he kind of yeah. like, at that point began to add more to salvation so and, and you know he'll say well i'm not a lordship salvationist well you know, um, he is basically teaching essentially a form of lordship salvation by saying, like, these things prove yeah. you're saved, you know. Well, Tim said that. Yeah. Um, I don't know this will upset some people. I don't care. King's Table has said that. Ed Fenninger says that. Obviously. I mean, I don't know if it's obvious to anybody. I don't agree exactly, with them yeah. on the Trinity uh, things. I could find fault with their teaching if I want, if I, you know. If they annoyed me, I suppose. I can't think of a... No, I mean, it's easy enough to find fault with what somebody's saying from Scripture. Um, but all this diatrophy stuff, kicking, booting people out, in their minds, out of the body of Christ. One week you're saved, the next week you're not. Brian Harlow, I think he's a Christian. Maybe BTM, he is. I don't know much about last day's maze, but I assume that he's saved. Jeremy uh, Carter. In fact, I do remember vaguely being watching the live stream. I think it was a live stream that Brian was doing where King's Table was blocked. I believe King's Table is saved. Even Divisive Inherentist said he is. And Jason, so... You yeah, I mean, so, someone someone can be saved and still believe heresy. That's the thing. I mean, Brian makes it out like if you believe certain heresies, you're not saved. Uh, again, that's that's getting into lordship salvation. You can believe wrong, you can believe false doctrine and, and still be saved. Like I disagree with Fenninger on the you know the thing of interracial marriage or the dispensational salvation thing. I I still do. I will publicly say I still believe in dispensational salvation, but I'm not going to say somebody who rejects it is lost. That's that's where I differ from Brian. Yeah, um, I mean to say. Post tribbers are lost. You know, I mean, I suppose you could argue that point, but they're just people who have followed. I mean, the Bible's like a map, John. You're yeah. trying to sort of. I know the allegory isn't all that brilliant, but like you got the Bible's like a map, and you're trying to please God, and you're following the map, following God's word, and sometimes you can get sent down. Like a cul-de-sac, you know. Um, 
and you've got to pray your way out of it if people especially are saying something you know that you've got it wrong or something like that exactly um, yeah I, I personally don't know any Christians that don't that haven't made any mistakes yeah and, and, you know, I used to believe that if someone has no conviction, I'd say they're lost. Well, I, I don't believe that way anymore because First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 talks about, you know, it says to quench not the spirit. So somebody can quench the Holy Spirit and, you know, not have as much conviction as, you know, they should have. So that's another yeah. thing, too. But that is, like, if they're not studying the Word as well as they should be doing... Faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. If they're not hearing the word of God properly, they're possibly not studying. Yeah. Properly, something like that. Yeah, and, and another thing too is that, you know, a new Christian is, you know, that they're gonna have to spend some time studying before uh they they just fully understand the Bible. I mean, because you know, again, uh, someone not fully understanding the Bible doesn't automatically make them lost. Maybe they just haven't been studying it as much as they should be. So, like yeah. somebody who was like, like because Brian's been studying it for like for many many years. So obviously he would understand more of it than someone who has maybe been studying it for a year or two. So to call that person lost because maybe I don't understand what this verse says, you know, it's it's heresy basically. It's, it's work. It's basically backloading works essentially. Well, there's no room for pride when you study in scripture because nobody on this earth can get to the end of it. it uh, God's word just gets deeper, John, in my yeah. experience. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's what kind of sets the Bible out from other, you know, scriptures like the Hindu scriptures or the Quran, a Muslim Quran or or you know other other books that like of religious religions is that the bible you know you you think you know the whole thing but then you you keep seeing more interesting stuff i mean you won't have that with the quran or or the or like the jewish talmud or whatever um the bible you know because it really is god's word so you like you know, you'll get shown more stuff over time yeah i've tried to read the quran as a christian just to so so that i can say well i've read the book you know and I just couldn't get through it, John. Yeah, I I read the Quran myself, and there's actually there's actually a verse yeah. where it actually where there's a verse in the Quran. I don't remember where it is off the top of my head, but it basically uh, says for Allah the Allah to basically curse those who believe Jesus is the Son of God. So, oh. yeah, it's demonic. <laughs> yeah, it is it's demonic. It basically is calling for Allah's curse on those who believe Jesus is God's Son. You know. Yeah. So, me personally, I think Brian sort of went wrong when, and I'm not having a poke at his wife, when he brought his wife on, people started being rude about her and his son. I think that made him extremely angry, understandably. Yeah, understandably so. I mean, don't, don't, like, if you're going to expose Brian, like, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, obviously don't bring his kids into it, you know, but, but, you know, but at the same time, you know, some of his responses to that have always have not been godly either. That's another thing too. Yeah. So, what else? Oh, yeah, the Jesuits. Yeah. No, I don't mind exposing the Jesuits, John. I, I, I was. Uh, this isn't a boast. I know some people listening don't, but probably want to believe. Or I was learning about the Jesuits in nineteen ninety two, the Hall of Babylon. The Catholic so-called church, because Gordon, who witnessed to me when I got saved, right? Because I was asking questions all the time. John, he was on the other side, other side of the landing at, at full mm -hmm. so I could ask him questions through my cell door because he was only like two or three feet away. Uh, but after a while, John, you know. You sort of start thinking, hold on, okay, I, I, I'm familiar with Catholicism. I know it's not of God. After so many years, you know, I mean, you get... I mean, my faith isn't about what the Jesuits are doing, what the Jesuits are not doing. Yeah. Or, or the Knights Templar, the, uh, all the other the Freemasons and all that stuff. You can get bogged yeah. down... John. Mm -hmm. Some people 
can do a ministry like that, like Eric John Phelps and another guy, Resistance Rising, on YouTube, Johnny Strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's rude. When I listen to him, I know it, I know that he knows what he's on about. I just wish he wasn't swearing and stuff, you know. Yeah. Off listening, but I, yeah. I couldn't plus, do it's it. kind of, plus, it's you know, it's vexing too hearing someone swear, but you know. But if you can listen to him and just put the swear into one side, you will learn stuff from him because he's up to date on what those people are doing. Exactly. Yeah. I've done loads of videos on. I mean, before Trump got elected, when when he when his name was sort of uh, publicised as being in the running for president, I thought, well, I'll go and have a look at Trump. See, because it never occurred to me to look before that what university he'd been to. I must have done thousands of tweets trying to expose Trump as a Jesuit. Did I get? Yeah. Did anybody take notice? No, no, they didn't. <laughs> yeah. Not that that means we should give up doing that. We should keep keep on it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I plan to do more stuff in the future exposing the Jesuits and because they are very, very wicked and, and they are, they yeah. do control most of the world. I mean, Mr. Babylon reigns over the kings of the earth. So, and, and you know, it is important for Christians to expose them. But at the same time, I'm not going to just dedicate my whole channel to just only exposing the Jesuits and not covering other stuff as well. God's word is more important, John. Yeah. Um, I think there's more to it than just Jesuits. I mean, everybody who isn't saved, John, the unregenerate, are enemies of the body of Christ. Enemies of every Christian, and they pro some of them probably won't admit it. Some are less antagonistic. But essentially, whether they realise it or not, they have a spirit of antichrist in them. They'll come out with stuff about evolution and we should all come together, you know, ecumenism. Yeah. Uh, new Age stuff. But they're all, when, you, when you look at it, they're all just enemies of the body of Christ, of those who would preach God's word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and, and that's also why I don't just, you know, throw around, throw around, oh, you're lost, you're lost, you're lost. I don't just throw that around because calling somebody lost is, you know, it's, you know, it's a, it's really big, big thing calling someone lost. So it's not, yeah. not like just some little thing that, that you can just throw around. I mean, it's it's a big thing, basically, calling someone lost. Um, I tried to give an analogy of that once, sort of. I think it he, he got it. Uh, I do remember a countable KJV. I was talking about, we were, I think we were talking about the Horde of Babylon and the Jesuits, and I referred him to uh, Daniel 2. Is that where the, that big image, you know, with the head of gold and the arms of silver uh, mm. and, and all that, you know. Um, the head, the, if you think of that thing as actually a body, the brain controls the body, and that mindset, that, that sort of worldview, that attitude permeate all through those empires. Through the exactly, Middle yeah. Empire, the Grecian Empire, obviously the Roman Empire, Babylonian to the hills. But there's one mindset behind it, and that's that of the beast, the Antichrist, the false prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, and, and I do laugh at these people who say, "Oh, America is mystery Babylon." You know, it's like, it's you know, normal. America, America clearly is missive to Rome. I mean, you know, I, I did that video one time on papal Jesuit control of American leadership, and Trump yeah. is basically going and bowing to this, you know, statue of Pope John Paul, this idol, this pagan idol, of Pope John Paul. So, like, who does Trump really submit to? Yeah, well, I think of USA has been one tentacle of that Babylonish religious system, the Catholic so-called church. Yeah. I also think of the USA, as I do with some countries, especially the Latin American countries, have just been just another Jesuit reduction. 
like they had mm. in Paraguay. Yeah. Um, was it Paraguay or some other country down there? I can't remember. Two or three places. Yeah. yeah. And, and the thing is, is that America used to understand the danger of Roman Catholicism. I mean, go back to the 20s, the 1800s. Oh, you know, yeah. Americans, oh, Americans, really? knew, Americans knew how dangerous Roman Catholicism was. And, you know, um, like, and, and, you know, Eric Phelps said this, and I agree with this, you know, when it comes to the Ku Klux Klan, you know, the original Klan, I've done, I've done research into it. They were originally very, very Protestant, very Christian, and they, they strongly opposed the Vatican. They strongly went after the Vatican. Uh, but then over time, they, they kind of went away from that. And then the Jesuit, because now the Klan, now, now they allow Catholics in the Klan, but during the twenties, uh, they, they were anti-Catholic and they went after the Jesuits and, and fought against Roman Catholic influence in America. Um, you know, Americans knew how dangerous Roman Catholicism was, and they, they knew the danger that it posed to, to well, their freedoms. Yeah. But wasn't, uh, weren't the Jesuits um, banned from the USA, or is it something else, some other aspect of Catholicism? I, I, I think at one point, I know in pre-colonial America, there were some there were some states, that I think, that banned the Jesuits, I think. Oh. I know they've been banned from about 60, I think, nearer 70 countries. Yeah, that that should say something about how evil they are. Have they got banned from that many countries? Well, they got kicked out of because uh, I think they had a university, Jesuit university in Iraq. I think they were booted out because uh, I didn't know. I didn't find out until a year or so after that that stuff because I was in jail when all that kicked off. But mm. uh, they kicked the Jesuits out of Iraq. Mr. Hussein did. Oh wow. That that can maybe be why the U.S. went after him because he kicked they kicked the Jesuits out. Who knows? So Lordship Salvation, uh, where did that description come from for that, John? Lordship oh yeah, Salvation. so the website that I I got the description off of is uh actually let me just share my screen so I can just share yeah, it on okay. screen. Uh, let me just figure out. I haven't used StreamYard in a while, so I'm just so I do. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's, uh, share. No, I'll put it. There we go. Share stream. So I'll share my screen right now. Um, how do I do this? There we go. So yeah. Lordship Salvation. This is on GotQuestions.org, and they oh, yeah. are promoters of yeah. Lordship Salvation. Yeah. And if you go down to their, how I think it's um down here. I'll just uh try to maybe zoom in somehow. They uh, give it give kind of basically a definition, and it's pretty much word for word is what Brian Dellinger believes. It yeah. says, "Lordship salvation teaches that a true profession of faith will be backed up by the evidence of faith. If a person is truly following the Lord, he or she will obey the Lord's instructions. A person who is living in willful, unrepentant sin has obviously chosen not chosen to follow Christ because Christ calls us out of sin and into righteousness. Indeed, the Bible clearly teaches that faith in oops I went up." Oh. One second, my mouse. Faith. It says, "Uh, what the? Why is my mouse? Why is my mouse doing this?" Um, there it is. The Bible clearly teaches. I don't know how that this. Clearly teaches that faith in Christ will result in a changed life. You know, pretty much word for word, and they even give some of the same scriptures that Brian would use as well. So, you know, pretty much word for word, the same for Brian. So, you know, Brian is a lordship salvationist by the standards of a lordship salvation website. Well, the thing is, right. Who brings about the changed life? The Holy Spirit in a person, in a man or woman, or the person who is supposedly filled with the Holy Spirit? I yeah. believe the Holy Spirit has to. I mean, if you, if a person gets filled with the Holy Spirit, right? I believe they're going to end up with a change. It cannot do any. That cannot do anything other than change your life. It has to. Yeah. Yeah, and there's actually some scriptures on that because essentially what lordship salvation is is a, den a denial of free will because you know you you're going to live holy you know it's not your choice essentially and you know I, I did a video about this earlier today you know scripture teaches that Christians have the free will and Paul over and over again let me just share my screen again over and over again is having to tell Christians you know don't live according to the flesh don't you know don't do this you know um, he's having to tell them why because it's their free will and let me just share my screen again. Um, let me just try to find the verse I was going to go to Galatians chapter five. There's actually three verses I'm going to go to 
Galatians chapter yeah. five. I'm just full screen this verse. Sorry, I'm still getting the hang of this whole stream yard thing. Galatians 5, 16. Um, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he's telling them, don't, don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, walk in the spirit. Why? Because it's their choice. And another verse on this, conveniently down there, Romans chapter th uh, 13, verses 13 to 14. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh, f that flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. And another verse on this is Romans chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. Romans, where is that? Here it is. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield your members as, as instruments of, of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as interest, instruments of righteousness unto God. So Paul is having to tell them, you know, you know, do this, you know, make sure you do this. Why? Because it's their free will. You know, it's not always going to be automatic after salvation. It's not always going to be an outward automatic change at, at salvation. That's why Paul is having to over and over again tell them, you know, don't do this, don't do that. So, I mean, it's so clear. Yeah. Yield is one of the key words in there, I think. I can't remember which verse it was in. Um, um, I think it was Romans 6, uh, 13. Yeah. And yielding up our so-called sovereignty for God's, for the sovereignty of Jesus Christ in our lives. Yeah. You see, we can't give anything to Jesus Christ. We couldn't even give him our, our sins. He yeah. Took, he took them. Yeah, our righteousness is, is filthy rags in the eyes of God. How, I mean, how does crying and all that, I mean, you know, I'm not despising somebody who says, oh, cried on my knees and, you know, begged this, that and the other. I don't see it in the Bible, John. Oh, yeah. And in my video, I gave examples of people who got saved and none of them were crying when they got saved. So yeah. like when Aaron came out and said, if you're not crying and bawling your eyes out, you've not been saved. That's a heresy because there are people who got saved and were not crying and bawling their eyes out. Romans 6, what, John, was that? Uh, Romans 6, 13. Oh, yeah. I'm there. Yeah. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Paul's, have, Paul's having to tell them, you know, yield it. You know, if it was automatic, he wouldn't be having to tell them to yield it, basically. Yeah. But with, if your spirit's at work in your life, you're going to yield. The more you study scripture, the more you learn of Jesus Christ. Yeah. As I said earlier, faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. Yeah. You're going to be more awake to what God wants in your life and hmm. to what God does not want in your life, but he's not going to force you to reject some, I don't know, habits, practices or whatever. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not meant to stress you out or get you all, you know, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? Am I really saved? Uh, that's not what the gospel is meant to be doing. It's called the good news. And the, the good yeah. news shouldn't be, you know, making you afraid or stressing you out, basically. Oh, um, I'm just going to share, yeah. share my screen again. Go Jesus on. Christ, in Matthew chapter 11, he says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke yeah. upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yeah. yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, yeah. That's the thing. Rest, at peace with God. Mm -hmm. And if you know, if people are, I mean, okay, we're responsible how we respond to what other people say to us, but sometimes if people can be a bit strong, a bit vicious in the words, and they can make a mess of your well not make a mess but they can shake your confidence as it were a little bit in your faith in Jesus yeah. Christ causing you to worry about whether you're saved or not 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, some more some more scripture on that, you know, because I, I like there's some some scripture I want to you know give out some scripture on that, you know, because one of the issues I have with Brian's video game sermon is he lacked he lacked a lot of meekness. And first, Second Timothy two twenty four to twenty six. And a servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive at him by his will. So yeah. it's meekness, you know. But why did Brian, and I'm assuming this is true, why did Brian, because I do remember uh, it being said that Brian had actually asked Tim to pull uh, last day's maze on him. I, I've i heard that. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that did happen because, you know, anyone who goes against Brian is lost, basically, in his eyes. Yeah. So, yeah, this Lordship Salvation, to me, John... Sounds if it's not full on Catholic, it's at least borderline Catholic, isn't it? It it is it is kind of getting into Roman Catholicism because it's not saying you have to work for your salvation, but it's still kind of backloading works in there because it's saying works have some part in your salvation because you know they prove you're saved. It's it's still just backloading works, basically. Proves you're saved. Yeah. How do you prove to anybody that you're saved, John? Yeah, you know. how, how, how do you prove that your soul is saved? I mean, you know, how do you do that? Oh, yeah, and, and, a, and a verse they often like to use. I've seen this, them use this so many times, and I've, I've you know, used it myself a couple times when I was deceived. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen again. Because this is this is a, a really common verse you'll hear these, these Lordship Salvation people uh, twist. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth for, not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. And they'll say, see, you have to look at their fruits. Well, what's it talking about? Beware of false prophets. It's talking about judging the, the fruits of, of false prophets, not talking about judging a believer's salvation based on their works. So they told, and, and like that, when I saw that, I'm thinking like, wow, they're totally twisting what it's saying. You know? See, the believer's works are going to be tested by fire, but not by other Christians. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, um, yeah, we can know them by the fruits, even the other brothers. But nobody knows what goes on once you're uh, you finished your video or your live stream. How can somebody yeah. judge your like? I mean, nobody knows. I mean, like you can make a good show on on a camera. You can turn on a camera and make yourself look good. But you know, nobody. I mean, like like I've seen this. You know, with a lot of YouTubers, like people who are into secular YouTubing. You know, like PewDiePie and some of these other guys. Um, a lot of times, these YouTubers, you know, you only know about them when they're on camera. Like you don't know what they're like off camera. And mm -hmm. I've heard some stories of YouTubers who have like sexually abused their girlfriends. And, you know, you think like this guy is making, you know, videos for young kids and here he is, you know, abusing his girlfriend, you know, you don't know what they're like off camera and somebody can put a good show on camera and make themselves look real good. Uh, just like the Pharisees, you know, appear, outwardly appear righteous, righteously, but off camera, they can be some kind of dirty scumbag or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, all these accusations, I mean, I know I've leveled accusations at people. Um, I'm not excusing it. Same here. I, I'm, I'm confessing to a fault. You know, I, I've I've falsely accused people as well. But to accuse you of stealing from Brian, that is probably one of the most stupid, st uh, foolish statements. Yeah, I've ever heard in in, in uh, how are you stealing from Brian? Yeah, and, and you know. 
I get like I I have like maybe one donation a week or two weeks. Brian's getting like thousands of dollars like every week probably, and it's funny because this is coming from a guy coming. This accusation is coming from a guy who has no job and gets government benefits, and he's accusing somebody like me who actually works during the week and just does videos as a side thing, as of stealing money and being lazy and that kind of stuff. I mean, okay, so a guy who has no job and gets government benefits can somehow accuse somebody who works during the week of being lazy and stealing money. You know, sure. Yeah. I, I don't know what, how GoFundMe works. I'm not going to labor the point. It looked like he's got $36,000 on there still. Mm. Uh, where, 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 if, where is his GoFundMe page? Does he, does he still have one up? Just type in Brian Denlinger GoFundMe. Yeah. On me, one word. Uh, I mean, I, 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 never... I, think I, I think I found it. Yeah, I found it. He, he still has. Let me, let me just share my screen. He still has um, the same amount of money he's always had. So, you know, nothing's changed really. Still got thirty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-eight dollars. Um, oh, it's the the other day. I'm sure what it was. Yeah, and some people donated like twenty-one days ago, one month ago. You know, he's get, he's getting like thousands of dollars. So it's like you know why like you know and and me i get like like donations like very rarely i get and they're like maybe five dollar i mean i'm not complaining i'm I'm grateful that people donate but you know i mean brian just gets lots of money so you know to accuse me of stealing from GoFundMe is the only one he's using sorry i didn't mean to interrupt i don't think gofundme is, is his primary source of raking in cash because he does have maybe, a website yeah. from going yeah on it. yeah but, this this donation page on there so yeah and then there was that one video i was like where brian was basically doing a video about how people are not donating to him enough and you know i need more donations you know it's like just dude get a job or something you know yeah. i mean i, I mean because you know it, it, it really kind of comes off and, and you know i'm not saying brian's like this but when he when he came out with that video basically a 40 minute video that's like about asking for money it came off like it, it, he came off like he just wants money he came off like he's money hungry and this is why people say you know he's out he's out to get your money basically because you know he does a whole 40 minute video asking for money and how people are not donating enough and you know well he's got a roof i mean i said this to uh deborah gill keep your screen up john you're all right okay <laughs> this to Deborah Gill because Brian wants his roof repairing now I said that sounds a bit churchian to me because um, it's a common, it's a joke in this country that the local parish so called priest blah blah you know the local vicar I hate to use that word yeah the roof repaired so it's a common joke and and, and that's the thing. That's the kind of the thing too. Is that you know, like, 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 are we even sure? Like, like, you know, we don't know what he's doing. With, like, when we donate to him, we don't know what he's doing with that money. I mean, that's another thing too. Is is that you know? And that's, that's why I never really wanted to donate to him because you know, if I'm going to donate to him, I want to first of all know what's going to be done with that donation money. You know, yeah. that's that's the thing. I think if I was getting donations, regular donations, I would screen cast me PayPal. Or whatever, yeah. Every every couple of days, once a week, show them exactly where it went. I mean, a Christian brother I know, what man his name? He did an appeal for Philippine Christians. Obviously, in the Philippines, they were, they were because of this so-called coronavirus stuff. Over there, if you don't, if you can't work, you can't get any money. There's no, there's no welfare or benefits. So he, he got money and sent it straight over to the Philippines and it helped them all get some food. So Yeah. And, <coughs> and they were our King James Bible believers. But where is Brian making distribution to the saints? I mean, I know of a couple of brothers that are struggling with Ill illnesses. Has he donated anything to them? I don't know. I don't think yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, and, and it, it's funny because, you know, he like most of the money is not even spent on like ministry type of stuff. And, you know, when it comes to his video quality, you know, it's basically a very simple, a simple format of a video. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm not like, you know, I'm not saying it had to be a Hollywood level type stuff, but 
you know, his videos are very, very simple to make. And, you know, to me, like, it doesn't seem like he's putting a lot of effort into like, you know, sitting in front of a, a video editor and, you know, cause when I make videos, I'll put like, I'll like edit it. I'll put the scriptures on the screen when I'm quoting it, you know, that's yeah. the thing. Cause I want to actually like, you know, make something that, that like, you know, people are going to like, they'll be, they'll edify somebody. And this thing about copying people as well music i remember like i think it must have been two and a half three years ago i used to message you i think on gab or discuss d-i-s-q-u-s not the other uh or some other website as well uh like forum type thing uh, on a youtube channel i used to ask you a few times about where you got your music from you never told me mm. uh, you've been doing using that style classical music for at least two and a half maybe three years i remember i've been using it like i've been using it for like year, like years before i even met brian yeah yeah oh the thing is john you can't seem to do anything right these days any of us really you know yeah Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I'm just responding to a comment somebody left me. All oh, right. Someone, yeah. somebody, somebody left me a comment just a couple minutes ago, uh, saying I didn't subscribe to hear you complain about other preachers. It was on a video I did did exposing Brian's uh, Calvinist heresy, like Brian basically preaching Calvinism. Um, he was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear subscribe to hear you complain about other preachers, saying I'm putting out lots of negative energy and that kind of stuff. Um, no, you know, is. I've got that video here. Sorry. Hold yeah, exactly. On. That's okay. Sorry. You know, and, and you know, it's kind of funny because you know, I'm not sure if this person's a Brian follower, but I've done maybe four or five videos on Brian. I mean, how many videos has Brian done on Steven Anderson? You know, you know, it's it just it's ironic. I've got that comment here. Can shall I put it up or leave it? Hey, you can put it up if you want. You know, I don't. You know, I'm not. You know, I mean, if someone's gonna public, someone's gonna publicly leave a comment. You know, yeah, sure, I don't care. They, they you know, they can. I'll let you show it. Reprogram for success. Yeah. Reprogram yourself. It sounds that. I mean, just his username sounds weird. Yeah. I didn't subscribe to hear you complain about other preachers. Negative energy. That sounds like New Age stuff to me. Yeah. I'll just like on that, but. I didn't have a chance to watch this because you upload, ju upload just before the start of the stream. Um, yeah. Oh. I've actually noticed that all the Brian followers seem to be unsubscribing because I'm, I'm coming out and exposing their cult leader. So they, they don't want to hear it. So they're unsubscribing. Well, what's difficult when you hear, when you hear not the, not the stream last Sunday, the Sunday before, he references God as being cruel, or oh, people seem to forget, people are forgetting the cruelty of God. And then the NIFB thing, why aren't the, why aren't the, uh, you know, clicking on that? Why aren't they realizing that that's just wrong? Yeah, I mean, him basically condoning child abuse. I mean, when I heard that, I'm just like, you know, huh? I mean, he actually said that i mean to me that that was a big you know thing for like wow this guy you know whoa you know that, that, there's something wrong there yeah but that cruelty of god thing i mean I, obviously i knew that it was just an absolute lie as soon as i heard that wow i thought i went in the scripture yeah. but he's rebuking people for cruelty so what's he yeah, saying and, and you know this thing of the cruelty of god he's, he's starting to almost sound like the westboro baptist church almost you know the cruelty of god you know He's starting yeah. to almost sound like the Westboro Baptist Church. And I actually have the clip of him saying that thing about the new IFB. Let me just see if I can share the screen. How do yeah. I do this? Any time, John. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I just so then I do this. Oh. Can you, um, you... Oh, I, I figured out. Well, never mind. I think I found out. It came uh, up then. Oh, here it, is. here it is. Yeah, I found it. Sorry. I mean, I, there's like different things on the application window here it is so here's brian's uh because i i saved the clip of him saying those things and yeah. about the new ifb and i'm like you know yes the new ifb is obviously a satanic cult but you know what he said here was pretty wicked 
Um, Your audio is not coming through, John. I haven't blocked it. Oh, let me see if the maybe I'm not doing something right. Uh, let's maybe. Oh, maybe I'll just let's see if I'll see if it works this way. I'll try. Um, doing on the actual video I posted, see if that works. Because maybe it's just I can't do it from the computer, maybe. Well, you can uh, post the link in the chat. I'll get. I'll just click on it and go to it. Or in the yeah. private chat, I'll get it definitely then. Yeah. I'll put it up. But, yeah, anybody who's listened to Brian Denley in the last two weeks. I mean, I don't hate Brian, you know, John, I don't. Me, me neither. Cool. Some of the things he's saying when you listen carefully, because I don't think I've ever really listened carefully to Brian. It was. Yeah, here, here's the clip. I think. Here we go. No, there's no audio coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's maybe, maybe there's something wrong with my mic or something. Oh well. Put the link. Put the link yeah, in. I'll, I'll, just, and I'll, I'll do put it. The link. I'll just put the link there. Oh, uh, the the. the clip where it's played is about um it's about two minutes and 23 seconds in yeah yeah okay i'll just put it in the private chat here it is yeah but when he said that i'm just like you know starting i mean that, that's why i had the thumbnail thumbnail that video was him with a pope over top because um pope benedict covered up for the whole catholic child abuse yeah. thing so Uh, what what time thing was it, John? Three minutes. Um, two, two minutes and 20, 23 seconds in. Give me a second. Yeah. Unreal. I mean, yeah, it gets to a point, honestly, if you're deceived by the new IFB, if you're in it and you're saying, oh, I don't see a problem with it, you know what? You deserve conception, right? You deserve to have problems. You deserve to have your children preyed upon, okay? Just like Roman Catholicism, which is ironically very similar to the new IFB. If your child gets raped after you've been warned and warned and warned, you deserve it. Your child doesn't because they're innocent, but you know, you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, that's enough of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, that that's and, and he says, Well, your child doesn't deserve it, but he just earlier said, you know, you deserve to have your children raped. So punishing the child who's innocent, you know, I, I thought Brian said in his sermon that God does not punish innocent people, you know. But yeah. then he's saying that God's punishing the innocent child for the parents. Um no hypocrite you know yeah and the other thing that he said there saved by nifb i'm not sticking up for stephen anderson i'm sure there are at least a few i wouldn't know i've never been i've never listened to stephen anderson for more than five minutes i don't think i'm sure there are some king james bible believing christians within that group that don't exactly agree with Anderson on some things. I don't know. Well, I mean, when I, when I was uh, when I was a false convert, I was you know I was deceived by Stephen Anderson, and you know, but to his credit, Stephen Anderson actually was the one who got me on the King James Bible because before, uh, you know, I was I was I, I I mean I wasn't really reading any Bible. I was kind of just you know really atheist, really liberal leftist. Um, Stephen Anderson got me to the King James Bible, and then you know. I later realized like year, years later, like years, because I was in, um, I was about 15 years old when I found Steven Anderson and I left his cult when I was about, I think 16 or, or no, I was 17 when I, when I left his cult. Uh -huh. And, uh, so, I mean, he got me to the King James Bible, but then, you know, I realized he's a nutcase and, you know, so I left his cult. Hold on, John. I want to pause it when I want to pause it. Not when, Google. Oh, my laptop's a bit slow, John. Mm. Oh, uh, Brian Denlinger's deceptive tactics against his critics. I haven't had a chance to listen to that, but explosive 
Poops trainers commented. Thanks for the heads up about that cult leader. And shoot since I guess from a 33rd degree Mason to Brian because I play sports or something like that. I just I just heard of the guy's comment. Very true, actually. I mean, and, and in the video I covered, you know, uh, Brian's sermon called Why Are Devil Possessed People Obsessed with Men of God? And Brian just dismisses anyone who exposes him as being devil possessed. So and, and that, that's where Aaron, that's why Aaron called me possessed, because he's getting it from Brian. He thinks anyone that exposes Brian is possessed. Yeah. Uh, but how many times has Brian, I know it's an old argument, but how many times has Brian exposed Stephen Anderson, Robert Breaker? I actually have a playlist on that. I have a playlist of every video I could find <laughs> of Brian dealing around Stephen Anderson. Let me, let me just show you the playlist of how many videos he's got on there. Um, see if I can uh, find it here somewhere. Yeah. I'll show you the playlist. Yeah, he, I mean, he, yeah. Right, go on, John. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say I'll see if I can because I, I have a bunch of playlists of um, Brian's videos that, that are now private. But hey, oh, here it is. Found it finally. But um, see if I can. <coughs> uh, where is it? Here, okay. Let me just uh, share my screen and I'll just get this thing loaded up. Um, here is basically Brian Dimlinger's, um, all the videos he has done on Steven Anderson. Uh, yeah. look at all this, all yeah. this is on Steven Anderson. Yeah. So, so he, he can use Titus chapter three, verse number 10 to rebuke those who expose him, but then he makes all these videos on Steven Anderson. Yeah. So it's, it, it hip and I covered that in one of my videos. It's hypocritical for him to use Titus chapter three, verse 10 against people like us who expose him, but then he can make all these videos on Steven Anderson. So, yeah. Well, it's a valid point. I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the goose, but not the gander. Yeah. No. Yeah. He used a scripture when it basically backs the, like the backs him up. But then when, when, you know, someone points out his hypocrisy, you know, he just, he can't handle it. I, I remember listening to a stream where Jeremy Carter was doing one with uh, King's Table. And, you know, yeah. again, I don't agree with them on every point, but King's Table did bring up a valid point. Yeah. He was talking with a uh, divisive inerrantist, and, oh. and and Matthew said, you know, how many videos are you going to do on Stephen Anderson? And King's Table says, well, I'll stop making videos as soon as I've done as many videos as, as Brian has done on uh, – or, or sorry, how many videos are you going to do on Brian Denlinger? And King's Table says, you know, I'll do as many videos as soon as I reach the, the amount of videos that Brian has done on Stevie Anderson. And, you know, Matthew had no response to that because it's true. I mean, how many videos is, like Brian has done over 120 videos on Stevie Anderson. So he has no authority to, tr to try to use Titus 310 against us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't mean to change subject, John, but to come back to this Jesuit stuff. I mean, I'm very aware, not fully. Not as well as I could be. I'd have to spend a lot of hours studying stuff and finding out things. But uh, would the Jesuits really need to infiltrate any group on YouTube simply because, because I've looked this up, I think I did do a Google search on who owns Google, who owns Twitter. There is Jesuit involvement in there. Yeah. I'm assuming they could do a lot more damage than they think they're doing. And I don't even think they'd even waste time trying to infiltrate Brian's. Uh, I mean, okay, he's got 30,000 subscribers. Most of them are false. Because uh, he hasn't had any new subscribers in about 14 months. Yeah. I don't know if they'd really want to waste the time. Do they need to? Are they tearing each other apart? I know it's a point I've made before already. I mean, I got blamed for causing discord within the fellowship of uh, the living body of Christ, and obviously he's referring to the Danlinger crew. Yeah. Well, I'm not even, I've never been a part of it. I spoke to people that were sort of deeply involved, for want of a better word, better, better to expression but uh oh lost my point there well i mean you know 
they kind of have this, this they, they have like this cultic kind of us versus them mentality where if you're not with their group, then you're somehow lost. It, it's, and, and that was something that kind of bothered me for, for quite a while. I mean, having this cultic mentality of anyone who's not part of our group, we kind of were suspicious about them. Um, it, it's cultic. It, it is very, very cultic how they, be, how they have this mentality. I think I mentioned it in another video that I did about Alan Deering and others. I've deleted it now. Um, but he referred to people as, uh, what was the exact phrase? Those out there. Like he's looking up, peering over the top of some of the stockade wall at all those who are not saved outside of whatever it is he thinks he's a part of. And, you know... Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's, it's like again, it's it's that it's that cultic cult like mentality, this cultic mentality of us versus them, basically. Steve so accusing somebody of being a Jesuit. It doesn't make sense. I can understand why someone would refer to Aaron. I'm not going on just about him. As being a Jesuit, but nobody, surely in the right mind, could call you a Jesuit, John. Or, or me. yeah, I mean, it, exactly because you know I'm just going to share my screen again. You know, I've here's some. Go ahead. Sorry, you're okay, John. Um, so basically, you know, to call me a Jesuit, um, here's a playlist, a playlist I did of, of videos against Roman Catholicism. Yeah, and I, I go into detail. You know, Jesuit trained lawyers. You know that kind of stuff. I go into yeah. detail of you know, the Jesuits and, and the Roman Catholicism. And I, you know, I've done more videos exposing Catholicism than Aaron has done. So, you know, if, I, if I'm a Jesuit, I'm, I'm a pretty bad job at it, doing a pretty bad job of being some kind of Jesuit infiltr infiltrator. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Do you, so you, you're going to say something? No, no. Um, you see, the problem is, John... I mean, I don't care what anybody calls me. I, I find it sort of amusing. The thing is, you, we can never disprove it, you see. Yeah. It's not possible. What do I do? Write to the Jesuit general if I had his email address or whatever? Get a yeah. big certificate from the so-called Pope, that disgusting individual in the Vatican? Yeah, that, that little disgusting heretic over there. What, what would it prove? Yeah. Would, Prove their point, really, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I mean, they can't really prove that we're Jesuits because you know, I mean, you know, if, if we're supposedly just talking to our Jesuit superiors, and you know, how do they prove that? It, it's all just it's them just throwing around accusations just that have no basis whatsoever. It's them nitpicking little things and saying, "See, they're a Jesuit." You know, yeah. I mean, Aaron just Aaron just accuses people of being Jesuits with just with no basis whatsoever. You know. Oh, I was thinking about this the other day, John. I said it to a brother because he phones me now and again. I think they're trying to keep regularly on a, and almost I think they're trying to set people up for it so they can boot them out as being a Jesuit. In other words, virtue signaling, if you can call it that. Well, yeah. the, the possibility anyway, at least, to everybody else outside the Denlinger crew that the Jesuits are trying to infiltrate our, our, our uh, uh, Brian Downing's ministry and they're trying to creep the way in and, and they're not. They're yeah, not. exactly. Oh, yeah, also, just a quick little side note. Um, I'm just going to, you know, would you mind if I pr promote, promote my Twitter page? Just going to share oh, that man. one. Yeah. And if you so want if to it, put oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go on then. Uh, so I was just gonna say, yeah. So if, if anyone wants to follow me on Twitter, I'll just put it right here. I've had loads um, of Twitter because I've been kicked off. Twitter. Same here. I've been kicked I'm off so many times. About six or seven times. Yeah, I've been kicked off many many times as well. I mean, Twitter is really, really like hard and cracks down when it comes to free speech, basically. You were on, John. Yeah, you were on. Exactly. Put, yeah. Put, up then what oh yeah i'll, I'll put my uh, twitter page up no! sorry just not sure if you could hear that. that that was um my uh brother just yelling in the background he he's you know just talking with some friends and he gets all hyper but uh was it? yeah well, my twitter page 
I was gonna put it on screen. Oh Share. yeah, John, put it up on screen. Yeah. So this is my uh, Twitter page. I posted this video today, um, showing basically the hypocrisy of a lot of the liberals out there who will um, they'll condemn you know the Klan, but they won't condemn you know the, the you know the Black Lives Matter movement and everything. So I was just yeah. showing the hypocrisy in this video. Um, Uh, sorry, just yeah. So sorry, just um, had to just take care of something. But yeah, this is my uh, uh, Twitter page. If anyone wants to, oops, scrolled up, check it out. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, but yeah, this you know anyone can follow me on Twitter. I had you know I have videos on here promoting Brian. Uh, this is actually ironically just two days before I found out that Brian is a cult leader. But uh, let's see how long it takes before I get banned off here. Yeah. yeah. I, I gave up on Twitter, John. Um, uh, it's not difficult. You can get, you can tweet extra long tweets. What do they call it now? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I haven't done it for a while now. When you go to this website, build a big tweet, and just keep clicking this button, and it'll keep tweeting the same thing. You put a, it posts a big image. Oh yeah, tween joy. Oh yeah. I've posted. I think I can get my Twitter up on screen. Tween joy. You can post extra long tweets. It tween put an image, joy. Some link. Uh, a link to a video. Tags obviously. Quite a large amount of comments. A lot more than 140 characters. Click on the button. You can, you know. I think I'll get my Twitter page up, and oh no, I don't. I mean, I hardly ever bother with it, to be honest with you. Mm. What what is, what is your uh, Twitter? What is your Twitter page? Uh, oh, I can't remember now. Let, let me just see. Log in. I've got a few of them. Uh. Uh, I've got me. Oh yeah, Papa Cletus. Okay, let me just let me just write this stuff down. Um. What, what was the? How, how do you how do you spell it? Hold on, let me see. Let me just. Where's Twitter? Oh, there it is. P A double P A. Okay, P P A double P A. Yeah. I think it's Papa Cletus still. Okay, and, and then what was that? P A double P A, and then. Oh, it's just Cletus now. Hey, yeah. How, how how do you spell that? Capital C. Yeah. L E T U S. Okay. Uh, the uh, Twitter handle is at boot the door. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, this is doing me in this Twitter on me uh, mobile phone. Um, is is your channel? Does it have? Does it have? Um, I, I think I found it. Boot the, yeah, I think I might have found it. Oh yeah, fallacy opposer. Is it? Is that your other one? Fallacy opposer. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, what's the handle for that one? Yeah. What was that? Hold on. I've had quite a few. What was the other? That's the Cletus one. It used to be Papa Cletus. Mm. Uh, I'll send you a link to him later, John. Um, All right. I think I've messaged. Ah, oh, that's it. I used to make direct message you quite a lot. A couple of years yeah ago. yeah i think it was uh two years ago or a year ago we used to sort of direct oh, mes yeah. direct message each other yeah uh yeah <coughs> now i mean we do we know the jesuits are always infiltrating they, they hate absolutely hate the king james bible yeah, exactly. They, they, they're um, 
I mean, the, the King James Bible is still on the list of forbidden books that Catholics can't read. Oh, I've got a follow thingy from you, John. Oh, yeah. 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 I'll just follow you back now. Okay. That should, I don't know if it's on your mobile. Uh, sorry, what was you saying, John? Well, I was saying that the King James Bible is still on. I mean, Eric Phelps pointed this out. The King James Bible is still on the list of forbidden books that uh, and that Catholics are basically banned from reading, essentially, because they don't want them getting the word of God. They have to read their corrupted yeah. Vatican versions. They spent a long time trying to undermine God's word, and they still can't do it, John. Yeah, they still can't. Uh, like, all they can do now is basically, because they can't stop the common folk from getting the Bible, so all they can do is just ban their own people from reading it. Yeah. And keep bringing out these so-called new Bibles designed for the common man. You know, easy reading, easy readers version, the message. Yeah. So-called translate. I mean, that's the annoying thing. They call them translations and they're not. I, I, I've got to be honest, John, this may sound a bit weird. I don't like referring to the Bible, uh, the King James Bible as a version. I think somebody else mentioned it's not a version of anything. It's God's word. Yeah, I mean, I I, I I agree with you on that. I mean, calling it a version just makes it like, oh, it's just another translation. You know, it's it's the Bible. It's the word of God. It's not just, you know, it's not just another translation that's more accurate. It's it's the word of God in English. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who did I say this to? It might be Justin uh, 982. I don't know if you remember him. 60,000 people dead for every page of my 1100 page Bible, John. Oh, yeah. 80 million and counting murdered. Yeah. And, and you know, God has not forgotten the iniquity of Mystery Babylon. So, all the, oh. all the blood they shed uh, that for of Christians trying to get the word of God out, you know, God's going to basically give it all back to the Vatican, basically, because God is not, God remembers their iniquity. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, they are a disgusting organization. I mean, for somebody, to, I mean, another brother, as I said earlier, he phones me regularly. Well, not regularly, but, you know, every other week or so. I mean, he's met me personally. Uh -huh. You know, where I live. he's never been in my flat. He he knows perfectly well just by talking to me, John. He knows I'm not a Jesuit. And it's totally ridiculous to him. I know that you're not a Jesuit. I mean, it, this may sound a little bit weird, John, but even two years ago, when I, when I, when I came across you on Twitter, Discuss, and uh, some other website, I can't think, I knew you were saved. But I knew you were sort of not having problems. I don't know. I just knew you were a Christian, John. I don't know why. I just did. That was my discernment on you. I knew there was uh, sort of errors going on there, you know. Exactly. I mean, at the time, I was still part of the whole Stephen Anderson cult, so I hadn't gotten out of that yet. But That was yeah. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'll go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, see what was foolish to the calling. I mean, this is the title of this live stream KJVM. It's not all about Brian Denlinger, his acolytes uh, foolishly calling people Jesuit Lordship Salvation. I've, I've put that definition up that you gave me, John, from uh, gotquestions.org. Um, mm. These Jesuits, I mean, they've got, I mean, I'm not even trying, I don't care what people think of me particularly. I know in whom I believe and who my faith is in and based on what. Right? Yeah. But the, oh, you know, I keep forgetting my point because I keep, uh, I'm getting old, John. Yeah. All about Brian. The, the, these. I don't know. I lost my point there. Sorry. Mm. Oh, that's yeah, okay. 
What else my train of thought? Uh, yeah, it's funny. I actually have um, uh, ADHD, so that, that happens to me all the time. I'll say something, and then I'll just, you know, I'm like, what was I saying again? Yeah. Yeah, it's old age, I think, John. I don't know. Yeah. For, for me, I think it's just having ADHD for me. Yeah. Lordship salvation. Yeah, I think I was probably just going to say something along the lines of, why on earth would they need to bother? They've got massively bigger fish on their plate than the King James Bible believing community because they're already tearing each other apart, calling each other Jesuits, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand why you would refer to Aaron as that. I don't yeah. agree. And I do understand why he probably says it because it's a way of discounting you altogether because he doesn't want to hear or comprehend what you're trying to say, what you are saying. Yeah. It's an easy opportunity to just discount everything that the, you know about. I, I, I am convinced, John, that he knows that you're a saved man. He and probably that, does, I mean... But he's lying about it. But I actually, in all seriousness, have come sort of close to believing that he was saved a couple of weeks ago. But I've never actually believed he was saved. It hasn't been my discernment that he is. Not that I'm yeah. a judge of that. I mean, I'm not trying to say he's not. I'm not trying to say he is. But I was introduced by... Uh, by I can't work KJV to Aaron Deering. I didn't know anything about him. He came in the live stream and that was it. And I, I, I was never totally happy, John, and I think he caught on to it. Both of them caught on to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the thing is, is that when I was fellowshipping with Aaron, you know, like, you know, I, I had been suspicious of him when I first met him, to be honest, because I'd listened to him. I mean, I didn't listen to him that much, but every time I listened to him, I just like something just didn't feel right. I'm like, you know, there's something wrong. I like, I listened to Brian. I listened to the other guys and, you know, amen. Great sermon. You know, I, I was really blessed. I listened to Aaron and just, it was just a really weird, bad feeling I would get. And, and I also got the same feeling with Alexander Hartley too. Both those guys. I like, there's just something wasn't, something wasn't right about those two guys. And, you know, um, I, 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 I I've said it before, but I don't believe Aaron is saved quite frankly, because, like there's not that fellowship with the spirit that I had with him than that I have with the with the other um, other brethren I, I would you know fellowship is, with. The sheep know me, yeah. And the sheep know my voice. If we're not hearing Jesus Christ through Christ through what they're preaching, you're going to get a discernment, John, of that, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, I listen to Aaron. I listen to Aaron. It's always he's always just very bitter, very very just wrathful. Um, you know, I, I I mean, like I never really like I never like I I was never blessed by listening to him. I mean, you know, I would say, hey, great sermon, but you know, something just didn't feel right. And I just didn't know what it was. That's the thing. I I'd really like to know what is what his real being, the bonnet is about you, John. Yeah. Not that I want to pry or anything like that. Yeah, and, and I, I think another problem too with Aaron is that he's this young kid who just thinks he's in full time ministry, and you know, some more scripture I'm going to bring up. Um, let me just see if I can find it. I don't remember the verse off the top of my head. It's good having this app where I can just search up verses. It's, it's really convenient. But um, Have you got a paper Bible yet, John? What? Have you got a paper Bible? Um, well, Aaron was going to send me one, but. He might have. He might have. He might have. He might have canceled the order because you know I'm a Jesuit now apparently. So, um, yeah. but let, let me. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, the Bible, when it talks about the qualifications for an overseer, it says uh, in First Timothy three six, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So Aaron is clearly a novice because you know I, I've demonstrated in my videos that he's he's a novice, and as a result of him not being qualified for full time ministry, but then thinking he's in full time ministry, he's being lifted up with pride and falling into the condemnation of the devil. That that's that's what's going on there. So he's being he's being lifted up with pride, and when you try to correct him, he just get his pride gets hurt and he gets real mad, basically. What I would say is, 
it's all well and good. Praise the Lord that you want to be an overseer of the body of Christ. But I would also say make sure you oversee yourself first in the word. You know, that you're not lying about people, saying stuff. Yeah. Perhaps you as I've done, I'd admit it, you know. Yeah. I take no pleasure in that. I've always referred to Aaron as being like this cultic Brian Dillinger yes man because whenever somebody attacks Brian, you'll have Aaron just pop up out of nowhere and attack that person, basically. Is Bo there? Um, he, you know, he, he's somewhere else, I think. Oh. Um, this Lordship Salvation stuff, John, we was discussing. Are you okay for time and things, are you? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's the weekend. I had the whole day, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it sounds Catholic. I think it's come from some Catholic sort of infiltrator into some part. Of it. But where did this Lordship Salvation come from? Where did that term come from? Did we? Did I mention that earlier? Well, Lordship Salvation right. as a doctrine, I, you know, it does stem from Calvinism. With It, it does stem from Calvinism because it is essentially... Um, Calvinist theology repackaged, um, which, you know, of course, John Calvin, you know, was came out of the Roman Catholic Church. So Calvinism is basically just another daughter of Rome, essentially. But uh, yeah, Lordship Salvation as a theology comes from Calvinism. But that term Lordship Salvation, it, it basically is saying, you know, Christ has Lordship over you and you make him the Lord of every aspect of your life. I think that's why it's called Lordship Salvation, basically. Um, he can't. I mean, Jesus never said, force yourself to be obedient to God's word. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. In those scriptures, like in those scriptures I showed earlier, over and over again, Paul is having to tell them to be obedient. So if it was like automatic, you know, why is he having to tell them and remind them to be, to be obedient? Yeah. I mean, when Jesus, because uh, Jesus actually prays for us, you know, John. Yeah. In John 17. And he never said anything, as far as I remember. I've read John 17 a lot of times from the King James. Um, nothing in there about anything that you need to do in order to make sure you stay saved. Yeah. You know, we're in Christ's hands. The salvation belongs to him. I mean, this is the thing I, I, I come not complained, I probably whinged about it, it may seem like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mentioned this to King's Table, that'll annoy the Denlingers, but, um, you know, the way people use God's word, John, okay, you know, if somebody's applying God's word to their own life as they should be, as believers, uh, but the way... With the way you apply it to your own life and through prayer and reading is important. But how you apply God's word to other brothers or those outside, uh, you know, those who are unregenerate is important as well. Yeah. Exactly, um, exactly yeah. Well, using it to insult to Tim, well, not an insult. The gospel is never an insult. It's to accept to those that don't believe. But they obviously sent him a gospel message as an insult. That and, 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 and then Brian, Brian basically harding those comments, implying that he agrees, yeah, Tim is lost. All because Tim tried to correct Brian. Yeah. And Brian Harlow, I mean, I could disagree with him quite vehemently. He hasn't done a video in months. Tim hardly does any videos anymore. He did a couple the other day. Last day's mess, I don't know much about him. Uh, but I really think they should carry on doing videos. Yeah. They believe the King James Bible. Okay, I disagree with him on something. Well, so what? I mean, there's, you know, I don't know how many Christians. How many Christians do you think there are, John? Genuine Bible believing Christians on. I had this discussion with another brother, but I don't think yeah. there's 36 of them in the USA. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, is that um, I 
Actually, I was curious what what did happen with Brian Harlow anyway? What did what did happen with him? Well, Brian, because I've got the screen capture of it, I've got a snip of it, I've got a file actually. I know it sounds weird and nerdy. Uh, Brian Harlow was pulled by Brian Denlinger for the backbiting and stuff in Skype. And there's some other comments made. I mean, I've got hundreds of screen captures. Mm. I've got about two gigabytes of them. Two wow. Three gigabytes of images and videos. More, more, actually. I've got a 128 gigabyte memory stick I bought a couple of weeks ago. Oh, wow. So... But after a while, you get a bit bored of that, John, to be honest, because it serves no real purpose. Yeah. How long do you keep hammering away at a cliff face with a needle? Yeah. You know, you spend two or three hours. I mean, it's right to expose false teaching. It may well take two or three hours uh, sort of mucking about and getting stuff together to get a video done. But if it gets just, just gets ignored, which it probably is, or they'll just use it, try and use it against you, won't they? Yeah, they will, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's you know, I mean, being in go ahead. Brian Denley, what, what? he's not the touchstone of God's word. Exactly, yeah. You know. And, and, and Brian, Brian, like what he does, he'll take verses which talk about you know, you're going to be persecuted for saying the right things. You're going to, you know, be attacked. And he takes that to where anyone who exposes him is persecuting him because he's saying the right thing, you know? And, 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 you know, that I didn't notice that, but then when I noticed that I'm thinking like, wait a second, you know, somebody exposing him is not him being persecuted. You know, that, that's not how, you know. Well, to be fair, most of the unbelievers, whether in USA or whatever, they don't even do a YouTube search of Christians unless they're intent purposely of going and winding somebody up. I mean, you get Catholics turning up on your channel. Praise the Lord, I haven't had any on mine lately. I've had a couple on mine so far. Yeah, I noticed the other day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like insatiable locusts round a honeypot. Thinking, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you know, it, one, one of the Catholics, you know, was saying that I'm demonically possessed because I'm, I'm in, because it was a video I did on with Brian Dillinger with his face on top of a pope's body. He was saying you like your attacks against the Catholic Church, you know, prove that you're demonic or something like that. You know, I, I, I'm just like, dude, the only thing that's demonic is your church. You know. Yeah. I don't hate Catholics, John. Neither um, do I. I neither want to see him get saved. Quite frank, I want to see him get saved. Exactly, because that the, the Catholic so-called church would absolutely hate that. Yeah, they would absolutely hate. That. If, you, if you really wanted to, like you know, attack Roman Catholicism, get Catholics saved, and then the papacy can't stand that because you know because then they're going to have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside them, and they won't rely on the priest for everything. I mean, they won't. They'll obviously leave the Catholic Church at some point uh, once they find out it's false and pagan. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you wouldn't believe the trouble I got at, uh, oh, yeah, Lindholm Jail in Doncaster mm. with the Catholic there, uh, John, and at Wymock, because I was, I mean, I didn't know, I mean, I knew there was those chick tracks. I thought they were useful. They did get a, across a point, if not as well made as I would have preferred. I, I was a little bit, the thing is, I didn't get much money in jail. They cost 10 pence each, which is a very small amount of money. I bought hundreds of them. I bombarded the jail with it. But when I got to uh, Lindholm Jail in Doncaster, eventually, I found out, I mean, I knew anyway, that the Catholics at, Lind uh, at Wymot absolutely hated me. And that's a prison screw coming up and telling me that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, because you were, you were sharing stuff with the prisoners and with the other people that, yeah, you know, leaving. that... that on the jail, John. I was leaving them in people's cell windows. I was going to the chapel, putting them in the missiles, the uh, the jigsaw puzzles they had over there, uh, their, their so-called hymn books, in the library. Yeah. So they were tripping over them, John. Yeah. I put, so and, I put and, a couple of under the 
there was two Catholic so-called nuns that used to come in. They had their own little out office. I shoved a couple of leaflets under there. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, which is why I've got the username boot the door. It was going to be boot the door, shout through the crack. <laughs> and it's the only way of getting through to these Catholics sometimes. But the best way, of course, is through prayer and reading and sort of. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I mean, Catholics, you know. When you say everything's fine. Oh, sorry, I just gonna. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, just something's going on. But um, yeah, the Catholics, you know, when you you know, it takes a lot of prayer. You know, it takes you know, because just arguing with them back and forth not is not gonna try to it's, it's not gonna work basically. Yeah. But you know, uh, are you okay, John? So yeah, sorry, I, I was just thinking that. Like, is there anything else we should cover or anything or? Yeah. Um, when I was walking around the exercise yard at Lindholm Jail with a brother, I only called Michael. I won't give a last name. We were just talking about God's word and other stuff. And uh, I said to him, oh, Mike, let's just nip in the library. You know, have a quick look, see if there's any books on the shelf, you know, whatever. And there was this Catholic guy in there, and I just spoke to him for about two or three minutes about Jesus Christ and stuff. Next, I think it was about two or maybe three days later, I found out he'd gone into the Catholic so-called minister's office, handed in his rosary, said, I don't want anything more to do with your Catholicism, blah, blah. I thought, brilliant. Praise God. And the Catholic minister, so-called... I mean, he tried everything to turn the other Christians at Lindholm against me, John. Oh, yeah? I tried to tell them not to have anything to do with me. Yeah, because, the, yeah, over the because the Catholics, they can't stand it when someone goes against their heretical system. No. No, they don't. I got kicked out of the chapel there once as well, and this was by a so-called Protestant, well, not even, I mean, I want to even say Protestant, because I, I don't like being referred to as Protestant, but he was a CV, he'd come in from outside sometimes and do a Sunday service or a so-called Bible study group. Uh, he wasn't connected with the prisoners such. He was just allowed in by the church. He kicked me out of the Sunday morning service. Yeah. He pointed out, Catholic, that the rosary is false teaching and, and, and oh, yeah, it's a vain repetition. Yeah, you don't need to go yet, John. Do you? I'm not trying to get rid of you. I just, you know. Oh no, I mean, uh, I might, uh, I might have to go now. I'm, I'm gonna get some food to eat. Um, well, I can wait for you, John. How long will it be before you finished your meal? I, I probably won't be that long. It might be maybe five, ten minutes. Oh, that's okay. All right, I'm okay. just gonna mute my mic and I'll be I'll be back in a little bit. All right, John. Yeah, the Jesuits. I don't. Uh... Yeah, I've done a lot of study on the Jesuits. I'm not an expert on them. I know what they're about. They they. When even before the Jesuits, it was the Dominicans that were running the Inquisition. Uh, Ignatius Loyola took over from the Dominicans. The Jesuits were running the Inquisitions in what it, throughout the whole of Europe, at least, and in parts of India and around other places in the world. They've done everything they can to undermine the body of Christ, to undermine the truth through the education system, politics, and all the other stuff. Filling people's minds with lies about evolution um, and just not, just sort of 
educating people to be stupid, to not have any sort of critical or reasoning skills. Um, and obviously, I mean, I know in the USA they took the Bible out of the schools. I vaguely remember assemblies at the school when I was a little rug bunny. You know, we'd, we'd sing, uh, we'd plough the fields and scatter and all that sort of thing. I don't think we do that anymore because it would upset the Muslims. The important thing, I would say, about making accusations against someone, in other words, coming up with a conclusion about somebody, whoever, on whatever subject, without backup, without proof, without any evidence, makes your argument, your conclusion, essentially foolish. Taking people out of context, twisting their words, it's ignorant. Uh, is it ignorant? Or is it just childish? Seriously, though, I mean, calling John Craig and a Jesuit, he's barely out of college, he's only 18. Uh, and it doesn't make sense. Why do it? I got accused of being a Jesuit. Not that I care that much. I'm just annoyed at the stupidity of the sorry, the foolishness of it. And then all those that were in the live stream with me, they're all jumping on the bandwagon. They don't want to uh, upset. People. All right, I'm back. So, all right, John. I was just on a bit of a, a bit of a rant, talking about people that come up with a conclusion, a sort of main statement about somebody. This person is this, and yet they they provide no evidence, no proof, no backup, and it makes what they're saying like foolish, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, so, I was just saying, calling yeah. you a Jesuit, the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a scripture. I mean, so I'm, I'm a Jesuit, you know. Okay. And, and, you know, it's coming from a guy who doesn't, he barely has any videos on the Jesuits. He has like one or two videos addressing yeah. the Jesuits, you know. And I've made like 20 videos or something like that. But, yeah, uh, but I was sort of speaking ahead. more but yeah specifically that and other people doing that there's more to the so called reasoning behind it than just giving yourself an excuse to uh, ignore the person yeah I mean there's some more scripture I want to cover on that um, yeah. Proverbs chapter on Proverbs chapter yeah I'll put it on screen Proverbs chapter 14 verse 5 a faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. You know, yeah. someone who's a faithful witness doesn't doesn't need to lie to prove, prove their point. This way, no, I mean, right? Forget Aaron Deering because he's not the big Tamale or anything. Yeah, he, he he's just he's just another cult like Brian Dillinger. Yes, man, pretty pretty much. He doesn't even have that many subscribers. He's not a big problem. Uh, well, I have noticed that he's a moderator on that channel. Mm. I went blind. Denling, I did a video about the Jesuits, or mentioned the Jesuits quite strongly, and that's good, you know, no problem. Aaron would do something to back up Brian, you know. He did something on the, on, on, on the you know, the Jesuits aren't a joke. Yeah. All really, that. Yeah. Really. It, it's funny. It's funny. He accuses me of emulating Brian. Meanwhile, he basically puts out a video on the Jesuits. Just like not long after Brian does a video on the Jesuits, almost kind of backing up what Brian said, you know, who who is really guilty of emulation, you know? Yeah, and I'm not having a go at Tim. I mean, hopefully you you 
sort of believe me when I tell you I do like Tim a lot. Same here. Uh, and when he came in the stream, I was pretty chuffed, you know. Uh, but for him to say, yeah, Brian's into this Pope Brian work salvation, backload in front load, you know, whatever it was he said, I can't remember precisely. In other words, he agreed, and I'm not saying he's got to say he agrees with what King's Table said on that point. But I think I would have said, oh yeah, I believe this about what such and such is teaching. This other person has said the same thing, although I'm in disagreement with him on other points. I do agree with him on this particular point concerning salvation. He didn't. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, even you some know, of the, Go ahead. Even some of these other Bible Baptist people, they can say some excellent stuff in a video, and some of their other videos might be absolute, not trash, but, you know, they might be post trib. Yeah. I'm not sure I would reference them, but. If somebody mentioned that person to me, I wouldn't say, oh, you listen to his videos, he's post-trib, and therefore he's wrong in everything he says. Because that would be wrong. That would be lying as well, wouldn't it? And, you know, an example of this is uh, Jason Cooley. I've recommended him for a while. Um, he is post-trib. He, he does believe in dispensationalism in a sense that there's a dispensational change. Um, although, yeah. he doesn't believe, although he doesn't believe in dispensational salvation, which, you know, to me... I'm not going to call somebody lost who believes that, but he does. He does say that he does believe in, in dispensationalism in a sense that there's there's changes that happen in the Bible. Um, you know, he he puts out a lot of good stuff uh, against the Catholic Church. He he's brought out a lot of good sermons, and you know, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to call the guy lost. And, and he preaches the right gospel. He preaches repentance. You know, you're a sinner. You need Jesus Christ to save you. You know, he, so um, I, I like you know I I used to recommend him, but. I might start recommending him again, but um, because I, I was convinced by Brian that he was lost because he's a post tribber, um, which you know I don't believe that way anymore. But you know, if I do recommend him, I'll just point out, you know, uh, I disagree with him here. You know, he's wrong on the rapture, he's wrong on certain issues, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to call him lost and say he's, he's or, you know, he's, he's a Trinitarian as well, but I'm not going to call him lost for that, you know. No, oh. well, Brian has admitted that he used to be a Trinitarian, I think, yeah. I'm sure. Um, how many dispensations, John? Oh, there, there's there's seven dispensations. I think the fall of Adam, of Adam and Eve, and the Tower of Babylon. I have the actually I have them written down somewhere. Let me just see if I can find them. And when Noah's Ark landed and he came out, then the death of John the Baptist. And then the death of Jesus, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then Pentecost. I actually have, um, I have a, uh, oh, it was on my website. I have a list on, on the, uh, what we believe section, a list of the uh, seven dispensations. Yeah. Uh, so the first one is the garden of Eden. That is from Genesis chapter one verses yeah. one for to chapter three, verse seven. Yeah. Second dispensation is the fall of Adam and Eve to the giving of the law of Moses. The fall happens in Genesis 3, 7 to 24, and the giving of the law happens in Exodus 20. The third dispensation is the law of Moses until John the Baptist, Matthew eleven thirteen, 13, and Luke 16, 16. The fourth dispensation is basically that period between John the Baptist and the crucifixion where the gospel of the kingdom is being preached. Um, yeah. And then the obviously the fifth dispensation, the one we're in right now, is the time of the Gentiles from the death, burial, resurrection yeah. until and obviously it ends at the rapture. Sixth one is the time of Jacob's trouble from the rapture until the second coming, and the seventh one is the thousand year reign of Christ. Oh, oh well, I, yeah, I mentioned the Tower of Babel, and I mentioned when Noah's Ark landed. Would you agree or disagree with me on them? Um. But, uh, my belief is that my belief is that Noah's Ark is actually in the second dispensation, that period between the the fall of Adam and Eve and the giving of the law of Moses. That, that's that's my belief on that. Yeah. Hmm. What about the Tower of Babel? Because things changed significantly. Yeah. That is the point. I, I think it's 
I think the Tower of Babel might have might have had something to do with it, but um, it was still in between like the fall, basically the fall from Genesis three to Exodus, uh, like basically anywhere from Genesis three uh, to Exodus twenty is the second dispensation because it's that that's my belief on that. Oh right, okay, yeah. I was probably thinking more of significant changes in God's dealing with uh, his creation, man. Mm. Uh, well, anyway, it, it's kind that. of funny. I, I watched that that video by uh by the new IFB dispensation of heresy, and um, that like they totally messed up the seven dispensations. I mean, you know, Brian correctly pointed out they they totally totally messed them up, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I googled like where are they getting this from because like they have like like the age of promise dispensation of innocence. I'm like like where are they getting this from? So I googled it. It, it comes from the whole Darby, you know, not Darby, yeah, the whole Darby notes and everything like that. Um, yeah. But but they, they tried to say that the law of Moses is like until the cross when, you know, I mean, what about Matthew eleven thirteen? 13? The law and the prophets are until John. But um, it, just, it just shows that they're totally ignorant of scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Not something to argue over vehemently, John, you know. Um, yeah. Which is a... It, gets people discussing scripture anyway doesn't it which is yeah <sighs> and if you know if you want this you know I, i'm not sure if i've covered this before but if you want the strongest passage um or the, the, like the three strongest passages proving uh dispensationalism it would be romans 16 25 to 26 um ephesians 3 1 to 7 and the, the other one is uh i think it's colossians 1 uh 20 uh, Colossians 1, uh, 25 to, to uh, 29, I think, or 26. No, 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 20, yeah, 20, 25 to 29. Those are the three strongest uh, passages proving uh, dispensationalism. Right. And the actual word dispensation is mentioned in Scripture. Yeah, it, it's actually mentioned. I, th I think in two, uh, two of those three passages, the word dispensation is mentioned as well. Yeah. I, actually, I'm, yeah. I, I, think I'll just I think I'll just read all three of them. I'll, I'll just read all three of them real quick. But yeah. uh, Please. Please do, John. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put it up on uh, screen. Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, I hit the wrong button. Yeah. So the first one, obviously, would be Colossians um, chapter one. It yeah. says, uh, I'll start at verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for the body's sake, which is the church, whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from the generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, uh, to whom God would make known uh, what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which Christ, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may, may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, wherein or whereunto I also labor, striving according to his according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. The other one, yeah. because it's saying, you know, it was revealed later on; it was hid before. So that's dispensationalism, and then. Oh. The other one is Romans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> other one is Romans 16, uh, 25 to 26. Now to him that is of power established with you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. And then yeah. the last one is... Uh, uh, I think Ephesians 3, 1 through 7. For this for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you were, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in, in a few words, whereby when you've read, you may understand that my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, but now is revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirits, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same bodies and partakers of his promise by, in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So it's right there. It was, it was hidden and then it was revealed to Paul. That is dispensationalism. So those are the three strongest passages. 
Because yeah. if a dispensational says, you know, give me one verse that proves dispensationalism, just give them one of those three passages because those are the three strongest ones proving it. Would you say that, that oh, John, keep that up again. Put that back yeah. up with you, please. Sorry. I'll, I'll keep it back up. i just, yeah. here we go. That, I was just going to say, according, does this destroy uh, Lordship salvation according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me? It definitely the, would. By definitely the would. working of his power. Exactly. Yeah, it's a gift. God's grace is a gift, and we don't earn it or we don't have to work for it. It's given to us by God. So Ephesians 1 7 actually is a good uh, verse against Lordship salvation, too. By the effectual working of yeah. his power. Yeah, of his by power. His, you know, Titus 3 5, yeah. not by works of righteousness, which we have done, you know. Yeah, but not in my power. That's the point. As I'm yeah. sure you, know, you know what I mean? I mean, a good tie in verse for that, a good verse to kind of tie that together is Titus 3 5, not by works of righteousness which, righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. By his mercy, he took our sin upon him. Yeah, he saved and us. We don't save ourselves. We didn't give him our sins, we had them, he took them. He died and paid the penalty for them. We yeah. can't bring sin to Jesus. Exactly, We're, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh. Sorry, I, I was just gonna. Sorry, no, I, I just you know. Oh, I don't know. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I was just I was just kind of my throat had something in it, so I was just gonna you know just that you know. But you're no. you're gonna say something? No, no. Okay. Uh, there's the, there's another verse I was going to go to on this thing of grace being a free gift. Yeah. Um, First Timothy or no, sorry, Second Timothy, chapter one, verses eight and nine. Uh, be thou therefore not ashamed, or sorry, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. But according to His own purpose and grace, which was given to given us in Christ before the world began, you know, again, not not by our own, not not according to our works, but according to His grace. Yeah, He saved us. He mm. called us with the holy calling. Yeah, holy calling. Not according not to our works. Our works, yeah, according to His own purpose and grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. When you get saved, it's God who saves you. You don't save yourself, basically. Can't. If he could, Jesus wouldn't have bothered turning up. Yeah, there, there was another verse. I was, I forget. This is actually a verse that some people try to use to go against eternal security. I'm trying to remember where it is. Um, here it is. Yeah, Second uh, Timothy chapter two, uh, verse twelve. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And a lot of the, the heretics will say, see, you know, you, you can be denied by Christ, but they won't read the very next verse. If we believe not yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. When you're a part of the body of Christ, you're part of his body. So if he denies you, he'd be, he basically would be denying himself. He'd be denying his own body. So he yeah. cannot deny himself. And the other thing I would say is Jesus isn't going to put his own body through his own wrath in the yeah. Daniel 70th week, time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. No. Determined upon thy people, you know, Israel, not the church. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a good a good verse actually on that is um Acts chapter nine. I, I covered this in one of my videos. Oh yeah. But uh again, just proof that when you're part of the body of Christ, you're actually almost like in a literal sense part of Christ's body. Um, Acts yeah. chapter nine, verses one, I think it's one to five. And Saul, yeah. yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, Jesus, I mean, no, Saul was never persecuting Jesus Christ, but he was persecuting his church, his body, and it was affecting Jesus Christ. So, yeah. um, you mean these post-tribbers, they basically are saying that 
we're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble and Christ is going to pour out wrath on himself, basically. You know, it's ludicrous. And Paul wasn't crying and in tears and weeping and... <coughs> yeah. Exactly. Where, where, where anywhere does Acts chapter 9 say it? Where anywhere in Acts 9 does it say Paul was, was weeping and bawling with tears? He was afraid. He was terrified. But where does it say anywhere in Acts 9 that he was weeping and bawling his eyes out? Yeah. I'm going to put your PayPal link in the chat, John, if that's okay. If somebody wants to chip in. Sure. Uh, there's only one person watching. I'm not sure what they'll do, but I will put that. I think it's just me, actually. I, I have the thing on the screen because I, I like to look at the chat. <laughs> yeah, salvation, it's not something to play about with and start sort of delegating. Oh, he's saved. He's not saved. Uh, I know how yeah. I actually said I don't believe. I mean, I'd like to believe that Aaron's saved. Same. I, I don't think I've heard anything that convinces me that he is. He definitely doesn't behave like he's saved because he just because he because he falsely accuses his brethren this way. I don't sometimes, John. You know, um, but playing about with God's salvation like that, uh, using His Word to sort of do a diatrophies on somebody. Brian's done it in the most despicable way. I mean, with Mega Daily. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the whole history of it, really. And the way they treated Jeremy Carter in that. That, that was pretty that. wicked, too. The way they treated him was pretty wicked, the way they treated that, him. All four of them. Last day's Mays was in on that. Tim and, and uh, Jake, Brian. <laughs> And they were all in there giving it amen, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, and you know they weren't they weren't looking at both sides. I mean, like they weren't looking at Tim's side of the story because Tim, you know, when I, when I watched Tim's side of the story, I'm like, yeah, Tim was obviously right and Brian was wrong. It was that simple. But most of most of Brian's followers were uh, not following Proverbs eighteen thirteen and were answering the matter before they hear it. Yeah, I mean, I know Tim said some things. In comments that he shouldn't have done. I know that he talked to tried to talk to Brian in Skype privately, emailed him or something, I don't know. But the way they ended up treating him, no. Uh, yeah. And, and the thing about Aaron is that he just like in, in the words of that one Jurassic Park character, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've seen Jurassic Park, you know, but um he said, you know, he basically wields salvation like a kid who just found his dad's gun, basically. You know, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, he basically, yeah. he basically, treat, like, he basically, like, uh, you know, just declares everyone lost at the drop of at, at the drop of a dime. Basically, he just everyone's lost. You know, and, and you know, like, like these young kids all just come out think they can just call everyone lost. I mean, calling somebody lost is not like not like a small thing. It's a big thing because saying they're lost means they're going to be burning in hell for all eternity. So it's a big thing to call somebody lost. Yeah. It's not. Just, it's not just something. It's not just something we should throw around lightly. Basically, no. <sighs> what? Um, yeah, lordship salvation. We've done that. Is there anything more you can say about lordship salvation, John? Well, I mean, I think um, there there is a scripture that um, I can't remember where it's at exactly, but uh, um, oh yeah, yeah, uh, because lordship salvation, they always judge. You know, according to someone's outward appearance. Well, John, let me just share my screen again. I'm not, you might know where I'm going with this, but uh, uh, let's share my screen. Yeah. John chapter seven, verse twenty-four: Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Lordship salvation heretics are always in violation of that. They're always judging according to someone's outward appearance and not, you know, judging righteously, basically. Ridiculous what he said. Oh, he's wearing a short sleeve. I mean, I don't want to go on about him because he. Uh, I'm not trying to be rude, but he's not important to me particularly at all. Yeah. But to say, oh, it's, I mean, as, as part of your so called proof, he's wearing a short sleeve shirt. You know, so what, I'm supposed to just wear a sweater when it's really hot out, you know? Yeah. How hot was it, John? Was it like a well, summer? It, it was, it was I summer. I, I was dripping with sweat. You know, I'm not going to wear a sweater and just be dripping with sweat in my video. Well, it's hot, obviously. I mean, we get some really hot days here. We did have uh, yesterday. I hated it. 
But in Canada, I'm sure it'd be a bit worse, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, in southern southern part of Canada, it's a lot hotter up down here. Yeah. But for, for him to use that as like proof against me, it, it again is judging according to appearance, which is a violation of scripture. Yeah, I've got to say though, John, I know you can't do anything about some of those channels. Hey, are you planning on altering any of the imagery on your channel? I, I actually, um, speaking of those channels, I actually managed to get access to those, to the, to those other channels. Um, cause apparently I had another account where the passwords were saved. So I, right. I figured, Hey, wait a second. I can just log into that other account and the passwords were busy synced into that account. Um, yeah. so I, I managed to get access. So I, I removed all the other videos cause I managed to get, I, I oh. managed to get access to the, to the other channels. Yeah. So I, I'm yeah. thankful for that. Yeah. I don't care, John, really about how many channels you've got. I do think yeah. you're spread thin. Just keep one channel. Everybody knows where you are then. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, I'd like to see you get loads of subscribers and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it is quite good fun, actually, building these, building channels. And Yeah. I'm not YouTube. Did you see some of those funny channels of uh, basically impersonating Brian and, you know, like, Oh, I discussing have a in the two of them, yeah. It's yeah. Quite, you just got to type in um, KG, well, just type in Brian Denlinger to YouTube search. It's quite a lot of videos on them. Yeah. Some of them are quite old. I've just uploaded one that's uh, four years old about Brian's racism. Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw that one. Um, him saying yeah. that, you know, something about like the interracial babies will have complications or whatever. Um, like so far, I haven't seen any scientific proof on that, quite frankly. No, yeah, you know, uh, get, get a load of this. So, Brian posted a video. Let me just share my screen again. Brian posted a video about an hour ago, um, complaining oh, yeah, about man. censorship. Complaining about, let me just, this is funny. Basically, he posted this complaining about censorship, YouTube centering and deleting comments uh, from brethren on my channel. You know, yeah, I, I do, I do find it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I do apologise. Um, Device Who We Noticed did a video whinging about that. Oh. Well. I, because I don't know if you've noticed, John, but YouTube seems to be changing its format or, format or has been over the last 10 days or so. I've noticed that, the way you do stuff on your channel. And uh, that might be part of it, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the thing about YouTube is that, you know, I've had some of my comments deleted. Um, personally, this is not actually Brian being targeted because I've had it happen to other people too. Um, yeah. It's just YouTube. They delete comments if you have certain words in them. So, you know, yeah. in, in my opinion, this is just Brian, the Brian cult crying, crying persecution again, which is, is actually ironic because they've tried to shut down Max Bauer many times. So they're hypocrites. Yeah, yeah I heard that. Yeah. They tried to shut him down. How? What? Thumbing down all his videos, or just reporting them? They, they, they tried. They tried to thumb down. They tried to get him shut down for like cyberbullying and internet harassment. You know. Oh. But but then they, but then they complain. They complain when it happens to them. But then when when but then they can do it back to somebody else who exposes them. You know, Max hypocrites. Has, I don't think Max has done more than two or three videos mentioning Brian Denlinger. I don't know. I'd have to go and look, but I don't think he's done that many. I don't. Mm. Oh dear. I don't. I don't think any of us. In fact, I know for a fact none of us know what really being persecuted is like. Yeah, I mean, Brian acts like having videos made against him is persecution. I mean, that that's that's. Not, I mean, come on, that's not persecution. Well, the first thing I would ask if somebody made a video against me is, well, if I watched it, you know. Are they right? Did I say that? Did I mean that when I said it? And am I wrong or whatever? Something like that. Uh, persecuting. That's quite a strong word. I'm, I'm not sure if you... Oh, sorry. Go on, John. I was going to say, I'm not sure if you've seen this video. Let me see if I can find it. It's called Attacks Against Brian Dillinger. 
And it was by this 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 uh, channel that I guess it was deleted now, but uh, Brian mirrored it on his channel. And this uh, it was by some YouTube some Brian cult follower called uh, King James Bible Believer, and he was basically going o- over all these different channels that were making videos on Brian. And he was saying, "Look, they're attacking Brian. You know, they just spent all day attacking Brian." Um, but he wasn't actually going through the videos and refuting their points. He was just whining about basically how people were making videos against Brian. So it's like, yeah. And I, 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 but you know, I, I was, I was going to do a video on that, but quite frankly, the guy's channel has been deleted. So, you know, yeah. and, and, and you know, to me, it's just proof basically that it's a cult because, you know, if someone exposes Brian, you're going to have, you know, these guys say, look, they're attacking them, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and I do agree. Ed Fenninger has made a lot of videos on Brian. Um, yeah. but again, you know, having videos made about someone's not persecution. That's the thing. Well, I think Ed Fenninger, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with him, uh, or whatever you believe about him, he has the right to defend himself against what he sees as false accusations, and they may well be false. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I've, I've I've mentioned this before how most of of people that expose Brian are former Denlinger cult members who have basically either been treated like garbage by Brian, or they've basically seen his true colors and now are basically warning people about him. And because Brian likes to say, oh, there are people, you know, that thought I was great and then they turn against me. Well, no, it's not they turn against you. They probably saw your true colors or they or you just stabbed them in the back somehow. And then now they're just warning people about you or about Brian, basically. But Brian probably doesn't realize that he's helping them out with the things he says. Yeah. You can't talk. I mean, John, I know I said this the other day. I don't want to be repetitious. But you couldn't say that on the on the in some of the prisons I've been in, without making sure you weren't already running down the landing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, say, saying that the children deserve to be abused, I mean, that that would get you beaten up in any prison. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. But John, he helped other people. I mean, he helps other people out with his own words. What he said, exactly. Yeah, because he keeps spewing out heresy and, and false doctrine. Yeah, and and other things. Yeah, and, and and not to mention the fact he's constantly contradicting himself too, and and you know behaving like a hypocrite, basically. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate the guy. I mean, he has got some good stuff on his channel. Uh. I hope hundreds of Catholics go and check out his videos against Catholicism. Oh yeah, I recommend them. They're they're good videos against Catholicism. I do recommend those videos on Catholicism. Yeah, uh, I believe Walter Veith, even though he's a Seventh Day Adventist, he's done some excellent videos exposing the horror Babylon for what it is, the Catholic so-called Church and its practices and whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. But I wouldn't promote Seventh Day Adventism, obviously. Well, Seventh Day Adventism is just another branch of Rome, essentially, because they they, they believe in work salvation. They believe you have to keep the law. So it, it is basically Roman Catholicism, but you know, but they may not do the whole Mary thing or anything like that. But in terms of salvation, they're basically Roman Catholic. I I haven't looked into. Uh, I have come across it, but I've never met any of them. I don't think I met any in jail. I've met uh, Mormons, Buddhists, Muslims, Catholics, obviously. Uh, yeah. Jewishers. That's about it. Mm-hmm. But you know, back back to the whole thing of the whole King James Bible believer. He he like he like I'll, I'll send you the video, but. He was just like like saying, you know, he's making all these videos. Look at them, you know. But you know, it, it's like actually go through the videos and you know try to refute his points. You know, and, and given I don't agree with everything Ed Fenninger says on Brian. I mean, some of the points Brian Dillinger is attacked on are stuff Brian Dillinger gets right. But you know, he like like the the video didn't prove anything. He's all all it proves is that people are making videos on Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's. Oh, I can't pick up the link. I can't copy paste the link there, John, in in the chat. Ah. Uh, uh, somebody I mean, oh, watching. Oh, let me see if I can. Uh, 
I'll share it in the private chat. Please. All right. Because I can get it, then I can't. There you are. I've got it. Is it a long video, John? It's it's about eight minutes long, and, and he did he did a part two to it as well, where he, you know, um, I had the part two saved on my computer somewhere before before he deleted his channel or something. Oh. Ragtag guy here on um, call. Oh yeah. Ragtag band. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at one point in the video, he says, you know, uh, you know, what scripture are they using? Because Brian uses all the scriptures rightly divided by the word of truth through, pro through proper dispensations and pro proper biblical teaching through the, through the Holy Spirit that Brian has. It's like, okay, that, that was kind of weird to think, thing to just go on that tangent like that. But I just, I just like that. Through you know, he, he, he teaches proper dis dispensation, proper biblical teaching through the Holy Spirit, which he has dwelt inside of him. I, I did a video on him one time where I said, "Yeah, I just I just responded by saying, spoken like a true cult member." You know. Yeah, but they talk about Brian like that, which if he's saved, yeah, it's right. But do they forget that if they're saved, that the the whole of the uh, Godhead bodily dwells within them? They have the Holy Spirit in their yeah. life. Yeah. But do they forget that they have discernment as well from studying God's word? You you can gain discernment, obviously, by studying the word of God. But, uh, yeah. Here, faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. But the yeah. more you understand God's word, the more you comprehend and apply to your life, but rightly, you know, I think the more discernment you're going to have. Why does he need Brian's discernment or, or anybody else's? Yeah. It's like giving up your discernment in favour of somebody else's, isn't it, John? Mm hmm Really? Exactly, yeah. <sighs> Not like... I mean, Jesus is not going to lead us into a lie if you follow in his word, if you follow what yeah. he says. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. You'll, you'll go, but you'll end up with a cul de sac here and there. But you keep to God's word, you know, and you're praying and reading. You're going to know that you've been fed uh, a red herring or whatever. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of funny because I was just looking through the comments on that video. And I'll, I'm going to share my screen again because it just shows how Brian really is just very nasty and sarcastic at times. I, I, I just noticed this right now, actually. But uh, someone says, you know, he's basically like you with Robert Breaker. And then Brian says, I haven't made 10 videos exposing Faker Breaker. Fenninger has made nearly 500 videos against me. You might want to take a course on arithmetic sometime. It might help. You know, just just totally slandering the guy saying well, you, you might want to take a, a course on math sometime. You know, Brian wasn't like that 10 years ago. He's just, he's very kind of arrogant, sarcastic right now. Yeah. Is that that video uh, attacks against Brian Denling and mirrored? Yeah, it, it was mirrored on Brian's channel. Yeah. I can't see. Oh, Alexander Hartley's on there. Yeah. I, I, was, I was talking with, uh, with Jeremy Carter, but. You know, we kind of agreed that Alexander Hartley, he, he's he's often very abrasive, very kind of just bitter in the comment section. That's the thing about him. Yeah, that was a year it, isn't, ago. It, wasn't, Hart, wasn't Hartley, uh, wasn't he a, a former homosexual or something? Well, you see, that's a difficult one, John. Um, because, as I messaged to you earlier today, I think, You see, the homosexual, uh, the sodomite spirit, that is a very poisonous spirit to be affected by. I'm not saying that the Holy, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit can't deal with that and get it out of your life and sort of, you know. Yeah. It's the desire still 
because he's I'm assuming he still has those desires within him for Uh, well, I mean, you know. they they kind of behave they kind of behave very effeminate in some ways. Well, yeah. But I saw an effeminate Christian, and I believe he is Christian because every time every one of his videos is about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a bit effeminate, but I don't think it's perp. He's doing it on purpose. I think it's just a natural. Seems to be a natural aspect to his body language. Yeah. Uh, well, you see, how would Brian? I mean, this is the point I made earlier. I think he preaches against sodomy, which is a godly thing. But anybody watching his videos who happens to be a sodomite, are they going to listen to what Brian says? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Um, if we went up to a sodomite and witnessed to them, and they knew that you had some real anger, not anger issues, resentment towards, I mean, there would be revulsion at their behaviour. Of course. But if they get on it, and I mean, the thing is with these, I mean, let's just talk about unbelievers. I'm not saying they've got discernment, but they always know. They always seem to know that you're a Christian. And sometimes most people know when they're hated or despised. You know, mm -hmm. yes, despise that behavior. It's ungodly. It's an abomination. But they aren't the abomination. Their 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 sin their their sodomite sinfulness is. So we'd want yeah. to share the gospel with them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, how can I put it? Um, you can't witness to people with an attitude, John. You know what I mean? Um, I understand yeah. that it's revulsion, it's repellent to you, and all that. I don't believe that you hate those people. Perhaps you feel uncomfortable with them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. Exactly, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I would only talk to a homosexual if I was going to witness to him. Yeah, yeah. Could you make friends with them so that you can witness to them? I, w I would, he... but... I would make I would you know be friendly to them. Um, that's the thing. If I, if I was going to witness to them, yeah, yeah. I think the best people to witness to sodomites are those who are ex sodomites. Yeah, so, or had a previous lifestyle of sodomy. But I don't mm -hmm. think it's a good idea referring to. A sodomite as a sodomite in conversation if you're wanting to witness to them because that would in my opinion i think it would clog their ears up and switch off altogether oh here we go you know uh, yeah well we don't have like the whole westboro baptist type approach you know oh. that kind of stuff difficult conversation john yeah i don't i mean i wouldn't pretend to know what's going on in Ale alexander hartley's head or capital kjv you know um i'm not their conscience praise god uh we can never be that john you know i don't know another man's witness of the yeah, holy spirit exactly. life. i'm not in a position to judge that the holy spirit searches all things God knows. He, know, he knows what we were like from before the foundation of the earth, John. Exactly, yeah. You know, from every angle you can think of, God comprehends us mm -hmm. fully. And I'm not going to come out with that silly old phrase, which I hate hearing. Oh, God knows my heart. Well, yeah, he does. 
it's wicked desperately wicked yeah and deceitful exactly and matthew i think matthew 15 talks about that yeah are you okay john because i know we've been talking yeah sorry i was well. just sorry i yeah. was just um i, thought, be... I was just looking at I was looking at, I thought I saw something outside, so I was just looking at something. All right. I bet you've locked Bo outside, haven't you? Um, Bo, Bo is actually an indoor cat, so he, he, doesn't, he doesn't go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've done loads of, uh See, I wonder if the Jesuits, John, I don't know if this has ever occurred to you, going back to the Jesuits again. Um, I'm sure the Jesuits have had some influence on promoting uh, sodomy. I society. believe so too. Well, I mean, uh, I read a I read a book one time about how it was about eighty percent of the Catholic clergy are are homosexuals, sodomites. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah, all, it doesn't surprise me all, because you know. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, hey, go ahead. They bring out all these laws and stuff. Uh, yeah. Making it legal for a non-criminal offence, and Hollywood seems to promote it. I think Hollywood's been promoting it for a long time. So, well. It, it went from it went from basically it being illegal to it being legalized to now the marriage being legalized to now it's illegal to speak against them basically. Yeah, yeah. John, can what? you just talk for two minutes? I'm going to mute and I'll be back. All right. All right. Got to check me down. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So. You know, sodomites, they can they can definitely get saved. Uh but yeah, but the whole thing on the the uh attacks against you know attacks against Brian Dillinger, the uh video by King James Bible Believer, the uh cultic Dillinger, yes man, but he goes on about how uh you know pe people are making these videos on Brian Dillinger and you know, oh look look, they're attacking Brian, but he doesn't deal with any of the any of the, the subjects of the videos, you know, he, what does he, what does he go through? I can't play, I can't play audio for some reason, but, um, you go through Ed Fenninger videos he's made. Uh, what is this? Sorry. I'm just, I'm just looking through this thing. Uh, yeah, so they go through Ed Fenninger and exposing, you know, I, I don't agree with Fenninger on everything. But he does, you know, expose the Jesuits and expose, or no, no, sorry, sorry, I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of Eric Phelps. Um, he exposes Brian Dillinger for his heresies. And some of Brian Dillinger's heresies do line up with the Roman Catholic Church. So, uh, like his thing against uh, easy believism or like, I mean, obviously I'm not, like Stephen Anderson tier easy believism, but I, I do believe that salvation is easy and that grace is a free gift. Uh, see Romans, Romans chapter five, verse 15, to 18 and Romans three twenty four, talk about grace being a free gift. So that's my belief on that. Yeah. I was just thinking, um, I think the main attack of the Catholic so-called church, apart from, Corrupting it, corrupting their, for want of a better expression, worldview, their view of reality or whatever, is against the King James Bible. As soon as you mention King James Bible to people, John, as I did to this guy where I live here in town, it triggers them. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, exactly. Yeah. I the Bible he was using, he said NIV. I say a Bible, I mean, you know, I think knowing me, I would probably have said what so-called Bible are you using? Because I, I sort of, 
but he, he got really uh, quite riled with me to the point out it's Catholic didn't like it at all and then this other so-called ministry in town they've got a radio station they use the so-called good news Bible which the Catholic so-called church endorses mm -hmm. well, they've, rather than infiltrating the body of Christ in person you know like get starting a youtube channel and blah blah they just try and get people they infiltrate the body of christ with these so these false bibles don't they the NIV, exactly yeah the bible and the nkjv they absolutely hate it john mm. we've got to keep trying to preach and share the gospel from that king james Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we, I think we might have covered everything. I guess. Yeah, John, just let me if you need to let me know if you need to go. It's okay. All right, I'm just yeah. putting some scriptures in the uh, in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't look like anybody else wants to come in and chat. Yeah. I might actually have to head out now, so... Okay, John. Uh, yeah. I've enjoyed your company. Thanks. Uh, if anybody knows John Craggan's channel, if you want to chip in, just give him a couple of dollars or whatever it is. I don't know. Oh, here's Mega Daily, look. Oh, someone joined, finally. Nathan, Nathan French. Hello, Mega oh, Daily. I put the wrong scripture in the chat. Oops. Uh, where was it? Psalms. Oh, yeah, it was Psalms 12, 6, not, not 3. Right. Yeah. I was putting scriptures about how God preserves his word and that kind of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Right, John. It, what what time is it where you are? It must be about one o'clock in the afternoon, is it? It's one thirty-five p.m. right now. Yeah, yeah. I I typically get up at around like um, around five o'clock or something, yeah, like five o'clock in the morning usually. Oh, I have too many words. I have to cut back some of the words in this verse. John, did you get to Mega Daily's PayPal? Oh, she has PayPal. No, did she? Did you get the donation that she? Oh yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I I got her uh, PayPal. Yeah. Oh, it's half ten in the morning. Where Mega Daily is? All right. Yeah, I noticed, John, before you go. This might encourage you. Brian Denling is not more than two hours' journey from where you are. Wow. If he's feeling generous, he's feeling generous he might um, bring some apple pies round for you. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of funny if it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, he lives in in Maine, literally. Yep. I, I'm um, like three hours from the border, so I, I could drive to his house if, if, house if I wanted to. Yeah. I don't think he'd let you in, John. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm 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 a lost Jesuit now, so you know, I might I might be a security risk or something. Yeah. It's it's funny. I I don't recall anyone ever ever meeting Brian. I mean, like I've only heard of one person that has ever came to come to meet Brian at his house. You know, if he runs this house church, why is he like you know having to keep secret who comes and like having to have all the secrecy? You know, I thought I thought Jesus said I did nothing in secret. Yeah. I think there was a what one point a couple of years ago, I can't remember how long ago, where you could hear people in the background and he was having some sort of but that went pear shaped for some reason. I'd like to know more about that, to be honest. It, it's it's funny because the yeah, you know, it, it is really weird. It, it's funny how because the only person you really see in his videos are just him, his wife, and his kid. 
you know, how, how, like how do we even know he even runs a house church? Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Why would he need to be five minutes from the Canadian border, though, John? Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? You could literally, from where he was at Bridgewater, you could walk to the Canadian border, a good stiff walk, 15 minutes, maybe 20. Maybe not even that, but, you know, why? Yeah. And, and, and why, why, does he, why does he need... Um, was it? Why does he need a uh, studio like somewhere else, and then he needs another ministry office? You know. Yeah. Yeah, Mega Dilly. Yeah. If I if I ever meet Brian, I'll, I'll go bring him an apple or something. You know. Uh, you know, because uh, from what I know, he thinks that like grocery food is satanic or something. So I'll, I'll just I'll pick some apples and bring it to him. Yeah. You know. Or oh, some road kill squirrels or something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe I'll go and get some uh, I'll I'll get some uh, river water or collect some rainwater and bring it to him or something. Yeah. Oh no no I'll I'll, I'll um, uh, oh. yeah there, there's um these uh oh, I forget what the plant is called but I'll I'll look for some natural foods and bring it to him or something and uh, you know. Yeah. I have to make sure not, not to, you know, I mean, but if he lives that close to where I live, um, that's kind of interesting, actually. It doesn't seem far when I look at it on Google Maps. It's about three inches from from Ontario, Ontario to uh, Bridgewater. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could just go on Google Maps and just figure out how long. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the whole COVID, you know, Jesuit scam that it is, is, uh, you know, making it harder to travel, but I could, like, I could just, you know, you know, if I do figure out his address, I could just, you know, pay him a visit, bring him some stuff, um, you know, maybe tell him why I'm not a Jesuit and why Aaron Deering is a little liar, but yeah. Yeah. But Cause I, I guarantee you at this point, you know, Brian, you know, because Brian is obviously the leader. So I guarantee you that, you know, the Denling rights have to report back to their leader and say, I'm a Jesuit and I'm, I'm this, I'm that. So, yeah. If you do go and visit him, John, even though he's got three houses, I think I would strongly advise you to take a tent and a sleeping bag and a little cooking stove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's actually funny. I actually know his his address with his other house. I remember seeing a live stream where they showed his address. I know his address, so I, I'm not going to say it, but I, I, I know if anyone wants to email me in private, I could you know send you his address. His address. I know his phone number too, but I, think <coughs> I don't think he, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't phone him. It cost too much, and it would be a waste of time. Plus, I, I, plus, I don't want to. I don't want to get arrested for doxing somebody. So, I don't no. want to get arrested or anything. No. No. Everything's going to come out in the wash, John, at the beamer seat of Jesus Christ. Yeah. My laundry, your laundry, yeah. everybody's. Um. There will be some embarrassment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I've got a few lashes coming. Same here. Uh, yeah. What do you say, though, John? You know, pray about them. Yeah. That is the best. If you don't mind me being patronising, John, because I know you know this, obviously. Yeah. Our first protocol as it were or line of a not attack but yeah pray about I'll pray them. about them I'm, I'm not going to pray for them but I'll pray about them obviously yeah. yeah pray about them John he already knows anyway he knows what's going on in the body of Christ he knows yeah he knows what's been done what's been said All yeah of it. Yeah, I like what Mega Daily said. Bring him some app, bring him some apple pie, and say he needs some sweetening up. He does. I mean, you know, let me let me just let me show you let me show you something actually. It just shows how bitter this guy is. Um, uh, let me. It was a comment he left or something. Let me let me show you this. This I just found this today actually. But um, uh, screen share. Finally get the yeah. hang of this thing. 
But uh, he let, so in this in this video by this uh, cultic Brian Dellinger yes man called King James Bible believer his channel has been deleted but he did his video attacks against Brian Dellinger where he's just whining about people making videos exposing Brian Dellinger but uh, there's the comment somebody left uh, where he says so basically he's like you with Robert Breaker and look what Brian responds I mean you know this guy's got a lot of wrath check this out. Uh, I haven't even made 10 videos exposing fake or breaker. Fenninger has made nearly 500 videos against me. You might want to take a course on arithmetic sometime. It might help. You know, just... 500. Well, that's overstating it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, did Brian count? Like, just sit there and count how many videos he's made? I should think he has. I tell you what, he spent a lot of time looking for Max Bauer's uh, payment details address uh, and and whatever and to dox him yeah Matt yeah Bowers, um, yeah it must have taken him a long quite a, a day or so to find find all that yeah and and, right. and then you know when when jeremy carter left you got this aaron you know aaron deering just pops up out of nowhere and and is basically looking through max bauer looking for comments that jeremy carter left and you know, yeah. trying to find comments he left. You know, I mean, it really shows who the who the real stalkers are. Really, it shows who the real stalkers are. But John, I've got to tell you, and I know you know this, and I have said it to you before. Excuse me for repeating myself, but Aaron Deering, when he made that video about you, my discernment is, and it's not carved in stone. He spent three or four days getting that ready. He probably he yeah. definitely did. He definitely did. He had his laptop, John. That was planned four or five days before. I don't know if he was in communication with him then. Before he made those videos. That takes quite a lot of time, especially with when you hear his description of his own laptop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Exactly, yeah. He has like a really slow, you know, thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it must have taken him like days in advance, and well, yeah. I, I, I was I was distancing myself from all those guys, but you yeah. know, all like all I did was try to lovingly correct Brian, and then you got this little and then you got this little Aaron Deering kid come out. Yeah. And I, I call him a kid because you know, I mean, obviously he's physically older than I am, but you know, I don't want to come off as prideful, but I do. I am kind of spiritually more mature than him in some ways, and not not to be prideful or anything. I, I just you know, well, I tell you what, we'll back you up on that. You, uh, I said to you the other day, even. Even when, just before you came in me chat on that eight hour live stream I last did. You're years ahead of him, John. I knew I mean I messaged you about some of the stuff saying to you, John, I can't believe you haven't got on this and like I knew in me in me in me conscience I think that you that you knew you were just I don't know, I think you were just Taking your time over it, and then Aaron Deering, well, he dished out the straw that brought the camels back, as it were. Yeah, what what Aaron Deering did that was kind of like I was like over time I was like distancing myself over time more and more. But what Aaron Deering did that was just basically the last straw for me. Basically, yeah, so that was yeah. his last straw, pretty much. All I will ever do, John, I won't try to tell you. I mean, obviously, I would never try and tell you to talk to who not to. I wouldn't if you decided not to come talk to me anymore. That that's fine. I would be disappointed. All I want to do, John, is encourage you, and I don't, I don't believe that you need that from me. Just keep to God's word, the King James Bible. Oh, yeah. That's what keep, I plan to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've, and again, I've, I've gotten emails from people saying, you know, hey, they support me. They don't, they don't believe. I mean, I got one email yeah. saying they think Aaron Deering is just off his, off his rocker, just saying I'm a Jesuit. So pe there are people that don't, that don't believe Aaron Deering, and they, they think he's just, they think he's nuts, basically. They're going to say it too often, John. You can only cry wolf so often. People wake up to it. Why are these people always saying that this guy's a Jesuit, that guy's a Jesuit? It's almost as though if somebody wanted to become a real Jesuit, you just go and annoy Brian, and that's it. You, you're that, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. If you want, if you want to become a Jesuit, just just make a video against Brian, and then you're a Jesuit now. Basically, you're you're, in, you're inducted in the Jesuit order. That's what that's what it comes off as. You make a video against Brian, uh, you're now qualified as a Jesuit. Yeah, and if I am a Jesuit, somebody better send me my pay slip. 
if I'm not even bothered about the pay slip, you send me my money if that's what uh, I am. If they're uh, if I'm on their payroll, yeah. And, and think think of the logic too. You know, the Jesuits obviously control YouTube. So if we're Jesuit agents, won't they be boosting our channels to make us bigger? That kind of stuff. Yeah. You know. And if wanted to do real damage to Brian. They could do it big style. They could just delete him. Quick phone call, John from the Jesuit General. Your channel's gone. Yeah. Seriously, I think that. I mean, if, 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 if the Jesuits were really like trying to get Brian Dillinger, I mean, his channel would have been gone a long time ago. That's the yeah. thing. They just compartmentalize your channel. They'd make, they'd let you carry on buying subscribers. You just, your videos just wouldn't have any reach. They can sort of mouse trap you, like put in a little compartment. Oh, your videos aren't going to go much further. We can put fake views from different countries, and you're going to think you're doing something. You're reaching. Like you've got an international ministry when you haven't. Well, they they basically they, they shout they basically they'll basically would shadow ban you. You can post videos, but they have to scroll way down to find your video. Basically, like you can type. I've seen shadow banning. You can type the exact video title in the thing, but instead of your video coming up as the first result, you have to scroll like way down to find it. Basically, that's how they shadow ban you. Yeah. All oh, right. I wasn't sure that how that worked. Anyway. Well, like shadow bannings where shadow bannings where they basically make it harder like harder to find your stuff basically. Oh right. Oh well, it's like shadow banning your comments. Do you think your comments gone up? Yeah. When like it, it, it shows up it shows up on your page, but then to it when you're logged out it doesn't show up basically. No. Are you still okay, John, or you you want to go? I might I might I might head out now, but oh. you know, yeah. uh great great chat. Right. Yeah, thank you, Mega Daily, for the. Yeah, well, I want my pay. I want my wage packet. How much do they earn, John? Any idea? I don't know. I mean, if I'm a Jesuit, you know, I'm waiting for my paycheck. You know, I'm I'm waiting for that paycheck. Well, you wouldn't be working in a in a. Uh, well, in a shop or whatever it is in a market thingy, would you? Oh yeah, fun, fun little thing I want to point out too. You know, as far as being, being me being a Jesuit and stealing money from Brian Dillinger, let me show let me show you something. Uh, yep. Go on my PayPal. Look at this donation to Jacob M. Thompson. So I, I've donated to the brethren. So don't tell me I'm yep. trying to get people's money because I've well, donated you, to people. Since oh yeah, yeah. Like, like it says, donation to I donated about one dollar to him because at, at the time I didn't have a lot of money in my PayPal. So if I'm just so if I'm money hungry, why am I donating to other brethren? What was that book you bought, John, from Bible Baptist Bookstore? If you don't mind me yeah. asking. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it was. Um, it was a book on. It was actually two of them. It was hyper Calvinism, and uh, hyper dispensationalism. Basically, refuting those two things. All right. Okay. Will Will we uh, have you read them yet? Uh they haven't. They haven't come in yet. I think the order was delayed because of the COVID thing. I wish, honestly wish I could donate more money to you, John. Uh. Yeah, you know, like you know, Peter Ruckman. I don't agree with Ruckman. I don't agree with Ruckman on everything, um, but he yeah. does put out a lot of good stuff. Yeah. No, they've never helped Mega Daily. Yeah, I mean, he only I mean, took some of the money too. Yeah, he was embarrassed to do otherwise. Yeah, and, and like from what from what I've heard. Um, Mega Daily d donated to Brian Dillinger, and then Brian Dillinger just calls her a wicked harlot. You know, but, like just totally stabs yeah. her in the back. You know, six dollars short on a rent. Well, I would I would have donated six dollars. Oh yeah, I would have sent some too. If, you know, if I was if I was a walk into the cult back then. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna head out now. So, uh, yeah, John, I'm gonna go then. All yeah. right. We should do. We should right. do this again. Do you want? Do you want to do this again tomorrow or what? If you want, John, you let me know. Listen, John, let me tell you. Yeah. If you ever email me and tell me you want me to start a stream, assuming I've got hours left on my stream yard, I'll be right there. I'll start one within five minutes. All right. Okay. All right. All right, John. God bless you. God bless. All right, John.
Yeah. Uh, well, there's four people watching. I don't know who that is. I'd be interested to know if you want to make a comment in the chat. Uh, I can't think of anything more to talk about, really. God bless you for coming in, John, if you can still hear me. Yeah. Right. Oh, Nathan, hello. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, oh, man. The thing is, with Saturday... It is a bit of an awkward time to be streaming because on Saturday, at least in this country anyway, it's a day everybody goes shopping. So people are busy, aren't they? Got to get the week shopping in. Um, you know, it's a family thing, isn't it? Right, I do appreciate you coming in though, Mega Daily, Nathan. Uh, honestly, I mean, me and John have been talking, oh, nearly three hours now. And uh, it's all been useful. I mean, John's an excellent guy to talk to. Uh, you know. Yeah, we have to walk him through. And so what the, the, the Denlinger brand of walking in truth is misrepresent and lie about people. Blind never attacked me. He did call me weird once though. Because <coughs> <coughs> I told him the word sissy and the word idiot isn't in scripture. Why are you using it? Oh, you're weird. Yeah, right. Oh, what, are you having a curry or, or no, oh, you're Americans, aren't you? You're probably having a pizza or a burger, a triple burger. You two have a good evening. Enjoy your meal. And, uh, yeah, I like a curry, me. Curry in Japan. All right. I used to hate it when my mum did the washing when I was a kid. Pizza, yeah. I don't like the type of cheese they put on pizza. It seems to taste sort of acidy. Have you tried a curry, Mega Daily? Indian curry? In the loo with your patty. Listen, nobody from the Denlinger crew today is blocked from commenting on my live stream. If you want to come in and say something or whatever, or if you like Andy and you've got a load of stuff you want to copy paste into the chat why don't you I'm going in two minutes because I need to make a cup of tea I need to have something to eat uh, got to do me insulin I do appreciate you coming in though Nathan mega daily Yeah, I mean, referring to somebody as an idiot or uh, uh, a sissy or what some of the other words that Brian uses. I mean, I know why I use the word clown. I shouldn't use that. Anyway, 
I'm going to go now. If any of you four in chat, because I can see there's four people watching. I don't have my YouTube tab open. Um, I hate to leave while there's four people in watching and... Uh, Ah. Oh, that's either the ambulance or the police again. I don't know, how do you? See all this friction between Christians, right? Okay, people... Christians don't behave perfectly. We make mistakes, we say things that we shouldn't do. Stuff like that. But the unbelievers are seeing all this, you know. I haven't exactly helped. I understand that. Right, two minutes, I'm gone. I don't like to leave four people watching and then go. Hope you go around to, to uh, Faithful Servants of Christ, KJB's channel. I'll put a link in the description under the video when it's done. Oh, oh, Pope Brian Denning of the first has turned up. Wow. Uh, I do because I have to, really. Especially over the last two weeks. Also, some of the things that he's said on his own live stream, you can go and check it out yourself. I can find the timestamp, but I did a video of it. It's obviously him that's speaking. Uh, not this Sunday, gone the Sunday before. He says people forget the cruelty of God, which is not scripture. And in his video on the NIFB, he's basically giving credibility. Uh, oh, what's the word now? He's saying that the families of those people following um, Stephen Anderson deserve to have their their children abused that is sick i hate to re repeat his words that he actually spoke i've downloaded the video on my channel you want to check it out i bet he's still got it up there he's that brazen about it and then wearing that nazi swastika on his uh, face mask and putting it on his arm like he's doing something clever like he's illustrating some sort of point what point He's already upset a, a messianic, a Jewish believer with that video. Anyway, I really don't think there's anything holy about Pope Briar. I've seen some of your comments around as well. Uh, yeah. 
Right, I'm going to go in two minutes. Uh, hit to go with three people watching. Mega Daily and Nathan are having their afternoon meal, I think, or is it tea? Midday meal. Yeah, called it yes, man. Yeah. I would be embarrassed at having a yes, man. Somebody who said yes to everything I said. I'd have to, knowing me, I would eventually block them. I couldn't uh, do with it. I'd have to say something. Yeah. Anyway, anybody listening, I'm going in one minute. If you want to help John out, just with a couple of dollars to help so he can buy books and whatever. Where's the harm? He's only a young fella. He's learning, as we all are. I just want to encourage and support him. In, in uh, You know, I don't want to show him in any particular direction or drag him away from anything or whatever he's quite capable of making his own mistakes and coming back from them through prayer and reading scripture and right i'm going now i think could have been talking for three hours now Right, I'm going and then God bless you for coming and listening. Thank you. Hopefully me and John will do a live stream tomorrow. Okay, bye.